Welcome to my Google Display Ads course. I'm gonna be going over how to create a Google Display Ads campaign, some best practices, how to optimize your campaigns, responsive display ads, basically everything you need to know to create a successful Google Display Advertising campaign. So you're gonna see all the timestamps first. So if you wanna to jump to a specific spot in the video, then you can go ahead and do that now. What the video is gonna start with is my Google Display Ads tutorial, and then I'll go over the Google Display Network, I'm gonna go over responsive display ads, and then I'm gonna go over some different strategies and best practices as you're building your campaign, how to target different audience segments, how to target your data segments, AKA remarketing audiences, and we'll finish it off with optimization. So let's get started. The first video as I get started is my Google Display Ads tutorial where I show you exactly how I create Google Display Ads campaigns and some different strategies that I use as I am setting up my campaigns. So let's get started. Today is gonna to be my Google Display Ads tutorial. So I'm gonna go over my strategy for creating Google Display Ads campaigns and all of the things I try to make sure that I have set up before I create my campaign. So you can see here, I'm in my Google Ads account. So that's where you need to get started. You need to make sure you have a Google Ads account. And the first thing I always do before I launch any campaign is make sure I'm setting up conversion tracking. So if you don't have conversion tracking set up, this is what you wanna do now. And conversion tracking is gonna vary based on what your goals are. So for example, if you have a Shopify website and you're trying to sell products, you can use the Shopify integration with Google Ads and you can easily set up conversion tracking and pass along value for what people are actually purchasing from your website, how much they spend, and you can track that all back to your campaigns. Now, if you have a separate, a different type of website where people are booking appointments or they're calling you by phone, whatever it may be, you need to make sure you're tracking all of your key performance indicators in Google ads, because then you can actually optimize your campaigns for them. So to get started, I'm going to come in here to tools and settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to measurement and we're going to go to conversions. So this is where you can create new conversion actions, or as I'm going to do right now, import conversions directly from your Google analytics for account. So if I come over here to my Google Analytics 4 account for beachfronttocore.com, then what I can do is coming over here to configure. I recently created an event called Affiliate Click. So it's tracking every time someone clicks on an external link on my website, and I've been able to exclude all the external links that are not affiliate clicks. So I just recently created this event using Google Tag Manager and using my Google Analytics 4 account. I will create a separate video showing how to track affiliate clicks. But what you can see here is I have this existing event here. So what I can do is I can mark this as a conversion. So if I click here, it's gonna mark this affiliate click as a conversion. So now when we come over to conversions, my affiliate click will actually be here as well, tracking conversions. Since I don't actually have a purchase on my website, since it's an affiliate marketing website, I'm tracking how many clicks I can drive two different affiliate offers. So that's the first thing I like to do, especially when we're looking at Google Display Ads campaigns, making sure that we're setting up conversion tracking. So there's one more step that we need to take. But what I would recommend doing at this point is going to the admin section and making sure that you have linked your Google Analytics and Google Ads accounts. So you can see I have my Google Ads account linked here. I have personalized advertising enabled. And if we come back over here to Google Ads, before we set up our conversion action, what we can do is we can go to tools and settings here and under setup, what we're going to do is we're going to click on linked accounts. So this will show all of the accounts that we've linked to our Google ads account. And here's where you can link your Google analytics for account. It's very easy to do since mine are both under the same exact Google account. So my Google analytics for account, my Google ads account, you can see I have it linked right here. Now it also pulls in my farmhouse goals, Google analytics account. So I could easily link some of these other accounts as well. But for right now I have, this account linked here for beachfront decor so that's going to allow me to actually do a couple of different things first and foremost we come to tools and settings we come back to the conversions page let's go to measurement and we're going to go to conversions and what we're going to do now is we're going to click on new conversion action and we're going to import so we're importing data from google analytics and we're going to choose google analytics for properties web and we're going to click on continue and now you can see my affiliate click affiliate click analytics event so if we come back over here, this is the same conversion over here. If we come to configure and we go to the conversions page, you can see we have this affiliate click conversion. And over here we have affiliate click as a conversion. So we're going to select this and we're going to import this as a new conversion action. So that's what you want to get started with is make sure you're using conversion tracking. And what I would recommend doing is for your conversion tracking, if we come down here, this is going to be set to other we're gonna click on this and we're gonna edit the conversion real quick. So we're gonna click on edit settings. 
So you can see here the conversion name is Beachfront Decor, Affiliate Click, Goal and Action Optimization. Since I'm just tracking affiliate clicks, we're going to set this as Other, that's perfectly fine, a primary action used for bidding optimization, and we're just going to be using $1 as the value. So what that means is it's going to count each individual conversion action as one conversion. So we'll click on Save here. It doesn't matter whether it's a dollar or it's just counting one. Every single click is going to count as one. The source will be Google Analytics 4. It's a website conversion. It's called Affiliate Click in Google Analytics 4. It's my Beachfront Decor GA4 property name. We're going to count every single conversion because every click is valuable. It could lead to an affiliate sale. And then click through conversion window. It's set to 90 days. So you can set this to a shorter period of time. You can keep it at 90 days. So I'm fine with keeping it at 90 days because I like to know how my how everything is performing. It doesn't have to be a short period of time. The attribution model, I would recommend using data driven. So data driven is actually able to look at all the clicks along the path to conversion give and give them each a value. So there's different attribution models here. I would not recommend last click or first click because they're only looking at one click on the entire journey. And with display, somebody might see multiple ads, click multiple ads, somebody might click a search ad, somebody might find you organically, somebody might find you on social media before they actually convert. So you're looking at all the different paths for a conversion and it's gonna give some credit to clicks on the path that happened from your display campaign. So first things first, we have our conversion tracking set up, so we click on done here. The next thing we want to do is we want to come over here to tools and settings, we're going to go to shared library, and we're going to go to audience manager. So we want to make sure we're creating remarketing audiences, which are also referred to as your data segments. So with your data segments, if we click on the plus sign here, you can use website visitors, app users, YouTube users, or you can upload a customer list. And you can create custom combinations using multiple remarketing lists. If we come to your data sources here, you're going to see I have three different data sources for this account already. I've linked my YouTube channel. I don't get enough views on my YouTube channel for Beachfront Decor to actually target it with campaigns. I have the Google Ads tag implemented on my website. And I have Google Analytics 4 linked to my Google Ads account like I showed you earlier. So what we're able to do is use our remarketing audiences through Google Analytics 4, there's one more step you need to make sure that you take before you can set up remarketing, and that's coming over here to Google Analytics 4, and we're gonna come over to Admin. Again, you wanna make sure your accounts are linked first and foremost, and then the other thing you wanna do is under Data Settings, you wanna come here to Data Collection, and you wanna make sure you enable Google Signals Data Collection. This allows you to create your data segments, aka remarketing audiences. So you need to make sure this is clicked over here and you have this check mark. As we scroll down, you also need to acknowledge the user data collection acknowledgement. So just click down here, read through, acknowledge it. And now what you're able to do is actually create your own remarketing audiences that you can target with your ads. I have some different videos on my channel that would be helpful if you're looking for more information specifically about conversion tracking or remarketing. So over here I have a Google Ads remarketing tutorial for 2022. I also went over specifically Google Display Ads remarketing, aka your data segments tutorial. I recently created that video about a week ago and published it. And then I also have my Google Ads conversion tracking tutorial for 2022. So all three of these can be very helpful if you're looking for more information on conversion tracking and remarketing. So let's come back over to our Google Ads account. So we have our Google Analytics 4 account linked to our Google Ads account, and we've enabled Google Data Signal. So we're, we're able to create our own audiences and our own segments now. So I'm gonna come over here to your data segments, and you can see here I already have a couple of different audiences created. You can click on the plus sign here, click on website visitors, and create your own audience segments. You could either say visitors of a page, page URL contains, and just basically put your own website here, beachfronttocore.com, and that would make an audience of people who have visited your website. You could also say page URL contains and use some type of category on your website. So for example, I say betting, and you can use and or, so you can create all sorts of different audience segments here, create the segment, and you can start targeting it that simple in your campaign. So if we scroll down here, I don't know if this one's large enough yet, but I've created a Christmas page titles, Christmas pages audience. So these, since my actual campaign is going to be geared around beach Christmas decorations, this is going to be an audience that I can target with my ads. So 
we're going to come back over here. We're going to come back to our main screen in Google ads, and we're going to start creating our Google display campaign. Now that we have our conversion tracking all set up and we can create your data segments as well. So we're going to create our campaign, click on new campaign. And first and foremost, we're going to choose our campaign objective. So since my conversion is considered an other objective, what I can do is just use the leads objective. I would recommend using sales or leads if you're bringing in value. So if you're driving sales of products and you're actually incorporating value into everything that you're doing as far as your conversion tracking, I would recommend using sales. If you're just counting every single conversion as one, I would use leads. So if someone's booking an appointment, use leads. If somebody's purchasing a product from you, use sales. So we're gonna choose leads here, and my main is going to be this other account default. My conversion source is my website. So these other two, I can remove these goals. The main thing I wanna optimize for is other. Now purchases and the other one actually aren't measuring anything. So I just have this other conversion goal, and basically it's my affiliate click conversion action. So if we're looking at my conversion action, you can see beachfront decor, affiliate click. It's saying no recent conversions, but we're gonna start getting conversions in no time. So what we can do is click on continue. Now, since we're running a display campaign, this is my display ad tutorial. Our campaign type will be display, and then we can enter our business website here. You can actually enter your landing page. So I'm gonna be sending traffic to a couple different landing pages. I'm gonna show you why, but we're gonna use this as our landing page, our Christmas product category, and we're gonna enter that as our website. And then campaign name, what I'm gonna do is Beach Front Decor Christmas Sale 2022. And we'll click on continue. So first and foremost is gonna be our campaign settings. So it's choosing our location and our language targeting. So locations should be any of the locations that you actually serve. So if you're serving a small area, you can come here to enter another location, search your location right here. It doesn't matter what it is. Maybe you're in Portland, Maine. You just search Portland and you're gonna have Portland, Oregon come up. Portland, Maine come up. You can target these Nielsen DMA regions, which are larger marketing regions. If you click on advanced search, you can actually see the map of where you're targeting. In my case, that's not what I'm targeting. I'm just going to do United States and Canada for this one. And then as we come down here, next is going to be your language targeting. Select the languages your customers speak. In this case, my language targeting is going to be English. We can come down here to more settings. So go over a couple of different things here. Ad rotation, it's automatically going to be set to optimize to prefer the best performing ads. The only time you should ever rotate ads indefinitely is if you're doing a test. I would recommend just keeping it at optimize, and that, that's what our setting will be. You can set an ad schedule if you only, only want your ads to run during certain times or on certain days. You can set your ads to run whenever you want to. You can set specific device targeting. So I'm gonna show on all devices, but you can set specific targeting and say, I don't wanna show on tablets or mobile phones or computers, whatever it may be. I always just choose to show on all devices when I'm creating a new campaign. Now, dynamic ads, you can actually incorporate a data feed. So if you have a product feed here, you can create dynamic remarketing ads. I'm not gonna go through that in this video because I don't have a product feed for this brand. So that's not something I'm gonna go over, but if you do have a product feed, I would highly recommend doing research into dynamic ads and making sure you set that up. Next down here, more settings. So content exclusions, start and end dates. I'm not gonna do anything with campaign URL options. Start and end dates, it's gonna to start today. My actual sale ends on the 15th, so let's end this on the 14th. Okay, so we're gonna stop running our ads on the 14th, and last but not least, content exclusions. Now there's some different options here as far as opting out of showing your ads on certain types of content. You can opt to exclude sensitive content. I generally don't do this. You can exclude certain content types, live streaming YouTube video below the fold. Sometimes I'll exclude below the fold just to make sure my impressions are above the fold. I don't know if this excludes every single below the fold impression, but it will at least exclude some of them. And then the other thing we can do is park domains. So a lot of times I don't want my ads to show on park domains. Sensitive content, I'm gonna leave this wide open. Now, one of the things with content labels is you could potentially get rid of general audiences and content suitable for families because you may end up targeting kids who are actually just maybe using mobile apps or are on different types of gaming websites or really any websites that are more geared towards families and children. You may wanna just exclude that content label if you want to. So then it's making sure that you're reaching other audiences. I'm not gonna do that in this case but that's one option that you have as far as content exclusion. So we can click on next. 
And now we're on to budget and bidding. So let's just say for my budget, I wanna spend $25 per day. Now, if you see here, the most you'll pay per month is your daily budget times 30.4. So let's just say, for example, you take 25 times 30.4, that's what I'll probably spend over the course of a month. So if, for example, your budget is $10 here, you're probably gonna spend about $304 over the course of a month. You're gonna spend more some days, less other days, and Google Ads is gonna to try to optimize your daily budget. So if, let's say, Sunday is your most popular day, then making sure they're probably gonna spend more money on a Sunday than they would on, let's say, if Wednesday's your least popular day. So we're gonna set a $25 average daily budget and come down to our bidding strategy. So what do I wanna focus on conversions? I can automatically maximize conversions. You can manually set bids, which is gonna give you the enhanced CPC bidding strategy. I would highly recommend just automatically maximize conversions, and then you can set a target cost per action. So in this case, for a target CPA for me, what you need to understand is how much each conversion is worth for your business. So if each conversion is worth $10 for my business, which it's not, but let's just say each conversion is worth $10 for my business, then I'd probably wanna go with this typical target CPA of 350, because that means I'm driving a positive return on ad spend. So if I set my target CPA at 350, then that means I'm gonna try to drive as many conversions as possible at $3.50 or less. You're paying for interactions, so we're focusing on conversions, we're automatically maximized conversions, setting a target cost per action, and we're just gonna set the recommendation they have here. And over time, what we wanna do is get this target CPA as low as possible. So let's click on next. Now here's where we start setting up our targeting. So who is going to see our advertisements? The first thing you're gonna see here is optimized targeting is set up for you. So what Google Ads is doing is they're using our targeting signals. So any of the different segments that we're targeting, they're gonna use that they're gonna use our landing pages, they're gonna use our assets, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna to try to find people that are gonna be more likely to convert at or lower than our current CPA. So if our target CPA is $3.50, we set up all of our targeting. What Google Ads is gonna do is try to find other people outside of that targeting that are gonna be likely to convert based on the information that they have. So I would highly recommend using optimized targeting, and then when you're adding targeting here, there's two different ways you can set up campaigns. Now, depending on how large your remarketing audience is, your data segments are, what I would recommend doing is if you get a lot of traffic on your website, let's say you're getting 10,000 visits a day, let's say you get over 100,000 page views every month, you're getting a lot of pe different people visiting your website, I would recommend setting up a separate remarketing campaign from your other types of targeting. So if we come in here to audience segments, what you can do is if we come to edit targeted segments and we click on browse, you can create one campaign that's focused on your data segments. So your website visitors, custom combinations that you may have, maybe YouTube users, you can target some of these different remarketing audiences in one campaign because then you can set your target CPA as low as possible knowing that you're targeting people who have visited your website. Now, while this website, my beach Christmas or my beachfront decor website gets a decent amount of traffic, it's really not enough to me to actually separate my remarketing out into a separate campaign. So if you're getting over 100,000 page views a month, you want to really focus on display advertisements. What you want to do is create one campaign where you're targeting your website visitors. Maybe I just do all visitors over the last 30 days. That's all I target. Go through the process of creating my ads, which will be the next step and I just target all visitors over the last 30 days. Now, what I would do for my own business is I'm gonna edit my targeted segments, so I'm gonna have all visitors over the last 30 days, and what I can also do is add these two different Christmas audiences here, which may not be large enough, but hopefully they're large enough after I start running this campaign and after we start getting more Christmas traffic. So I can target these three audience segments. We can come back over here, now, one thing to keep in mind is Google Ads says they're gonna be removing similar segments in August of 2023, and you're not gonna be able to create any new ones by May 2023. So we have them now, so we can target some of these different similar segments, just in case somebody watches this actual video. I'm not gonna be targeting similar segments in this campaign, but what I would recommend doing is targeting them for now because they'll continue to work until August 2023. So we might as well target our similar segments because we're targeting people who are 
very similar to people who are visiting our website or watching our YouTube videos. So in this case, I'm not going to target them, but I would recommend if you have them in your account, target them until they go away. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to custom segments and I'm going to create a new custom segment for this campaign for people who search for any of these terms on Google. And the segment name is going to be Christmas beach decorations search terms. Now what we want to do is we want to add all of our different, basically Christmas beach decorations keywords. So that includes things like Christmas beach decor, Christmas beach ornaments, and I'm gonna add a bunch of keywords here. I'm not gonna bore you with each individual keyword. Okay, so I entered a bunch of different keywords here. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm building these different custom segments is use keywords everywhere, enter a keyword like beach Christmas, we'll scroll down here, and they'll usually give us a ton of different long tail keywords. So beach Christmas tree, ornaments, cards, decorations, photos. So we're gonna add all these different Google search terms because I'm gonna assume anyone searching beach Christmas is gonna have some level of interest into some beach Christmas decoration. So just another idea to add more long tail keywords here. Okay, so we have our list of keywords and we can continue to add keywords here, but this should be enough for right now. We can always go back and edit this segment and add more search terms, but you can see our weekly impressions, 50 million to 100 million, gender 91% female, age is gonna be a little bit of an older age here. So uh, we have parental status and we have topics. So some different options as far as who you're targeting with your custom segments, you can actually create custom segments based on exactly what you're promoting. So that's what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna click on save and we're gonna add this custom segment. It's already added here to our targeted segments for this campaign. So we're gonna come back here and let's go to in-market segments. And if we come to in-market segments, we can search through here. The other thing you can do is just come to search and they're gonna give us some different options based on what we're targeting based on advertisers like you. Now what I can also do is say beach Christmas. If we scroll down here, it's pulling up some of the custom segments I've created before in market segments. So Christmas items and decor, there's not really a good in market segment specifically for beach Christmas. So in this case, what I'm going to target is my website visitors, these three different audiences and my custom segment. What I would recommend doing also is targeting a similar audience and targeting an in-market segment if it makes sense for your campaign. In this case, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for my campaign. So we're going to target this Christmas beach decorations search terms and these three different website visitors audiences and click on done. So we have a really targeted audience. We have optimized targeting turn on our weekly estimates. It's showing 6.2 million impressions available for this campaign. And I wouldn't worry too much about your estimated performance here. So based on your targeting settings, daily budget of $25 and a bit, a target CPA bit of $3 and 50 cents, it's saying we're going to drive zero to 10 clicks. So not worry too much about that. What we can always do here is add more targeting. So you can incorporate some content targeting, which is actually going to limit your campaign to different types of content. So if I come in here to topics, what I can do is say, I wanna target these audience segments when they're looking at home and garden topics. So they're gonna be, I'm suggesting web pages, apps, and videos about a certain topic. You could see this severely dropped my impressions, so it's not nearly enough if I'm gonna actually limit it by topics. So we're gonna leave it wide open. We have optimized targeting turn on, so that's gonna find more people. Google may find people beyond your targeting signals. So. That's no issue with me because it's finding people that are going to be relevant for what we're trying to accomplish for this campaign. So when you're targeting different segments, I would really, really focus on in market, specifically your data, and you can create your own, your data segments campaigns. If you have enough traffic, I would highly recommend doing that. Similar segments, you can target similar segments as well up until August, 2023, you can combine segments. And then I would definitely create your own custom segments. So you can target much broader audiences than I have here. I like to start narrow and I can always go broad later. So I could always come here to custom audience segments, create a new custom segment, people with any of these interests or purchase intentions. And if I say beach Christmas decorations, I can add one thing, click on enter. And you're going to see that gives us 50 million to hundred million weekly impressions as well. We can also come down here and expand the segment by also including people who browse types of websites and we can enter our own website here. We can enter 
other competitor websites here. So we can do all of that to try to find more and more people. So if you need to expand your audience, just create more custom segments and try to keep those targeted as well. But you can always expand them if you need to. And there's definitely larger, if we come back over here, larger in-market segments that you can target. But in this case, there's just not a really good one for what I'm targeting for this campaign. So we're ready to click on next. We have our targeting all set up. Now we're creating our ads. So our final URL is already set because we set it at the beginning of our campaign. If yours isn't set here, then come over here, copy your URL, paste it for your final URL. That's your landing page where you're sending traffic to. So business name, we're gonna set as Beachfront Decor. We're gonna scroll down here, suggested images. We can add up to 15 images. So they have a couple different suggested images here based on our uh, the page that we entered as our final URL, so our landing page. But if I click on images here, what I can do is either go over to my asset library, it's gonna pull up some of the different images that I've uploaded. I can go to my website or social. You can use free stock images. So you enter a search here, you can see you can use any of these different images. They're gonna pull up images that are gonna be relevant to what we're promoting. So what I could do is just maybe take a stock image like this one, nice picture of a tree and we can select it for two ratios. So when you're selecting your ads, you can choose 15 images, there's two different ratios. There's 1.91 by one, and then there's one by one. So you basically have a landscape and you have a square. So we can select these two ratios here and now we have our first two images selected. What you can also do is upload images from your computer, from Google Drive. So I'm gonna upload some images now. Okay, I've uploaded some images. They go into your asset library. So you can see here some of the different assets that I have. So I could use this, this is another stock image. This is another stock image, but I'm gonna use actual product images here. So we'll use this stockings. It's just gonna select the square. If you wanna select the landscape as well, you can choose to. This isn't the best one for landscape, so we're not gonna select it. We're just gonna use the square for this ratio. What I would recommend doing is doing a split as far as the pictures you're choosing. I generally choose a few more square images. So you can always say I'm gonna choose eight square images and seven landscape images. So however you wanna do it. So we can keep scrolling down our asset library. I'm gonna select some different images here and we'll go through all of them as we go. Okay, so we have all of our 15 images selected. You can see here, I have this square snowman image. We'll select that ratio. I have this image of a Christmas tree with a beach themed Christmas tree skirt at the very bottom. So we'll select one ratio for that. We can also select this other one, although I already have 15 images selected. So let's keep scrolling over. We have this image right here. So I'm not gonna select this. The square image looks good. So we'll click on select one ratio and then we'll come back over here and we will use this one and we'll go to the bottom and select two ratios. Okay, so keep going over, review all of our images. So we have all of these different images here, all beach related, all Christmas related. So we're ready to click on save. We have all of our 15 images selected. I would highly recommend using all 15 images. There's really no downside. Now, if you're focusing on one or two products and those products only have a few images, then just make sure you're using multiple images when you're creating your responsive display ads because your ads are just gonna continue to rotate and show different variations. And what Google Ads is gonna do is serve your top performing rotation. So whichever is performing the best as far as your images, as far as your videos, as far as your logos, and your headlines, those are gonna be what continues to serve to people as they drive conversions. So next is gonna be videos. So I've already uploaded my videos to YouTube. So you can see they're already here. What you can do is search YouTube, enter your YouTube URL here, or you can search by keyword or channel. So you could just come in, take the URL of an existing YouTube video. Obviously this isn't a video I'm using for this campaign, but you could just take this URL, copy it, and come over here and paste it and it will pull up your video. So I already have my Christmas videos here. What I've done is I have a, a 30 second video. So this is a vertical video. And then I have a 30 second, just your standard video ad and a 15 second ad. So I have three different videos here that I'm gonna run. They're all geared around my Christmas sale and they all match the messaging here, save 20% until December 15th, beach Christmas sale. So we'll click on save. We have our three videos here. So we have 15 images, we have three videos, we're gonna add our logos now. I'm just gonna use these two logos. I have this four by one logo and then I just have a square logo. So we have our two logos selected here. Get rid of that one. 
make sure we crop this properly. You wanna make sure you look at your crop, so select this one ratio, and then we have our square logo, select this one ratio. So one is four by one, one is just a one by one logo. You can upload more than two logos if you want. I only have these two logos for my business, so I'm just gonna use these two, 15 images, we have our three videos. So we're ready to scroll down. Some of your headlines and descriptions have been pre-filled with suggestions from your final URL and previous high-performing ads. So they automatically fill in beach Christmas decorations. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of these headlines here. You wanna make sure you're using all of your headlines. So they give you five different headlines, 30 characters each. What we're looking for is to create great ads. So right now our ad strength is average. So we need to create our five headlines. We have a long headline, which is 90 characters as well and then five different description lines. So we're gonna add all of these description lines, all of our headlines, and our long headline, and I'll go through them in a minute. Okay, fast forwarding a little bit. So our ad strength is now excellent after we've added our headlines, after we added our long headline, and after we added our description lines. So you wanna make sure you're adding all of this different ad copy because again, Google Ads is gonna rotate your images, your videos, your headlines, and your descriptions. So to get the most out of your Google Display Ads campaign, you, all you need to do is use responsive display ads. Make sure you create videos around your promotion. Make sure you're using images around your promotion. Upload your logos, create a really good landing page, and then make sure you have good ad copy that's gonna get people to click your ads and hopefully convert. So I like to do different types of headlines. We just have a generic beach Christmas decorations, couple based around the sale, so save 20%, save 20% on beach decor, coastal inspired Xmas decor and elegant beach Christmas decor. So different ways to kind of show what we're promoting. Long headlines save 20% on beach Christmas decorations. And then for description line, shop the top rated beach Christmas decor, discover coastal Christmas decorations, 20% off, save 20%. So these are my ads now and I have all of my ad copy set up. A couple different things we need to do. Additional format options. Use asset enhancements. Let Google enhance your assets and optimize your ad layouts. I keep this checked. Use auto-generated video. So if you're not uploading your own videos, if you didn't publish any videos to your YouTube channel, then what you can do is use auto-generated video. Personally, I'd rather just upload my own videos and give myself more control. Since I've added my own video content, they will only be used when my video content is not able to be used. So for the most part, they're probably just gonna use my video content because I've offered a couple different video variations and I have, a, I have a vertical video, I have horizontal videos, so I have different types of formats. Include native formats, so I'll keep this checked as well. So keep all three of these checked. Auto-generated video is one that you could uncheck if you want to. Now, personally, it just, it just depends on a matter of preference. It brings our ad strength down to good. I wouldn't worry about that too much. If you just wanna focus on your images, your ad copy, don't worry about using auto-generated video, but I'll keep it checked for now and come down here to more options. So we have call to action text. So in my case, it's gonna be shop now. You just wanna use a call to action that's gonna match what you want people to do on your website. So I'm gonna do shop now, English, and click on more options one more time, custom colors. So I'm gonna enter my two brand colors here for beachfront decor. Okay, so we have our two custom colors here. Show this ad on text and native ad placements even when publisher settings may override your custom color selections. Keep this checked as well, create ad. So we have our first responsive display ad created. What we're gonna do is duplicate this advertisement and we're just gonna change the images. So we're gonna keep our ad copy exactly the same. We're gonna keep our videos. Everything is gonna stay the same except for our images. So we're essentially running an A-B test of images from one ad to the other. So if one ad has images that tend to perform better than the other, then that ad is probably gonna show more often. So we're gonna come back over to our images, come back to our asset library. I'm gonna choose all unique images. I'm gonna have to upload some more images now. You can use other stock images as well. So maybe I'll choose a couple stock images and then I'm gonna use some different images. I'll fast forward through this part. Okay, we have our 15 images selected. Now keep in mind, if you see this watermark for Shutterstock, it's gonna be removed when your ads actually run but we have our images here. So I have 15 different images now. Make sure we crop some of these images to make sure they're uh, looking at what we want them to look at. So we have a couple different, oops, couple different ratios here. So it should be good there. Making sure we're cropping all of these. 
Okay, so these are all good images as well. We're gonna click on save. So now we have our second ad and all we've done is we've changed the images on this advertisement. You could also use different videos as well. So essentially just testing your visual assets, your images and your videos and see if one ad performs better than the other. I only have three videos, so I don't have more to test. So we're gonna apply our changes. So we have two different responsive display ads here. Now we're gonna take it a step further one more time. So we're gonna take our first responsive display ad here, duplicate it again. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna test our landing page. So we're coming over here, I have a different landing page, beach Christmas decor, nautical Christmas decor. So there's a bunch of different products for sale here. If somebody wants to search for cards, they can click on the link here, go to a bunch of different cards for sale and hopefully click on learn more and go to one of our affiliate offers. So coming back over to our display campaign, we've duplicated an advertisement. So we're creating our third advertisement, but all we've done is we've duplicated our first ad keeping everything the same except for the final URL. So we're testing landing pages now. So we're gonna end up running four different advertisements. We're gonna click on apply changes. So now we have this, our, the first ad we created, the second ad where we updated the images, the third ad where we duplicated the first ad and changed the our landing page, and our final ad here, we're gonna duplicate the second ad we created and do the same thing, just change the landing page. Okay, we updated our final URL here. So we've just pasted the final URL and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom. And again, we're gonna click on, going very slow here, apply changes. And now we have four different advertisements running for this campaign. So we're ready to click on next. So we're gonna click on next. It's gonna go to campaign review. Don't think we'll have any errors here. Okay, so we have our campaign name, type, objective, and our goal, our final URL coming down here, locations, language, start and end dates, content exclusions, budget, bidding strategy, and our first ad group who we're targeting. Now I'm gonna change a few things after we publish this campaign, so let's publish it. I'm gonna show you the next thing that I generally do. So we have ad group one here. So what I would generally do is rename this ad group and I'm gonna call it your data segments, okay? So we're going to do your data segments, we'll click on save. Now within this ad group, we have the four different ads that we've created. So we have four different responsive display ads. Now one thing you can do, if you do have display ads that you can upload, you can also upload your own display ads. So choose files to upload here. You could see supported sizes and formats down here at the bottom. So if you click on it, again, I've gone through this before, but 300 by 250 are very popular. 160 by 600, 300 by 600, 970 by 250, all of the mobile sizes here you can use, and then you can create other ad sizes as well. So I have kind of moved away from using uploaded display ads. I just think it's become more of a hassle than it's worth. And when I'm running responsive display ads, they generally tend to take up all of the clicks and impressions for a campaign. So we have our four ads here. Again, you can upload your display ads here too. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna keep my four different ads that I have. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to audiences, and what you're gonna see is when you're targeting different audience segments, and we come to show table here, all of our audience segments are in one ad group. So one of the things I like to do is separate my ad groups by the type of segment that I'm targeting. So a lot of times what I do is I'll create an ad group with similar segments, an ad group with in-market segments, an ad group with custom segments, and then an ad group with your data segments. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this segment and I'm gonna pause it. So we're just targeting our website visitor segments in this ad group. Coming back over to our ad group, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this ad group and we're gonna update the targeting. So we're gonna come here, we're going to copy, and then we are going to paste. This will paste all four of our advertisements and the current targeting. Everything about this ad group will be pasted. So we have to choose our campaign here we are choosing this campaign, clicking on done, and we are going to paste it. Okay, now that ad group has been duplicated, you can see your data segments number two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the name of this to custom segments, and we'll click on save. And then we're gonna come into this ad group. You can see our ads, again, the same exact thing with the ads here, so no issues with actually duplicating our advertisements. You wanna make sure you create all of your responsive display ads and upload all of your display ads in the first ad group that you're duplicating. So then every time you duplicate it, you don't need to worry about creating all those ads again. So now what we can do is come over here to audience and it's gonna show we're targeting our three data segments. So coming to show table, 
you can see here we have our three your data segments here so all we need to do is rather than keep this custom segment pause let's enable our custom segment and then we're going to pause these three segments here okay so we have this one audience segment that we're targeting here what i could also do is come in here to edit audience segments i know i have a another option here as far as my search terms i could just remove these website visitors altogether from this ad group come over here to browse scroll to the bottom custom segments and we'll do beach christmas decorations up here so we're choosing these search terms and beach christmas decorations so we have two different custom segments that we're targeting in this ad group probably pretty similar both of these custom segments but there's going to be no downside to targeting both so we have our custom segment audience here coming back to our campaign and looking at our ad groups what i would generally do and i'm not going to do this right now is duplicate these duplicate whichever one one more time so duplicate custom segments take it edit copy paste it and then again update your audiences and use a similar segment so use a similar segment for your next ad group do it one more time and use an in-market segment for your fourth ad group the reason why i like doing this is because as your campaign starts to get a lot of activity you're going to notice most of the activity is going to go into some of the in-market segments maybe you have a large enough custom segment that has a large enough audience as well a lot of the clicks and impressions are going to go in there you're not going to see a ton from your data segments compared to some of the other audiences unless you're getting a ton of traffic in which case i would run a separate campaign what you can always do over time is if you're having no trouble no trouble spending your budget pause some of these different ad groups so pause this custom segments ad group and just let your data segments run for a couple days what you need to do is continuously test because you're trying to get this target cpa as low as possible if that means targeting custom segments if let's say they're converting at two dollars per conversion compared to in market segments which are converting at five dollars per conversion you want to make sure you're running the ad groups that are actually converting for you so each ad group is going to have identical advertisements all you're updating is your targeting the other thing you could do is create an ad group and i could do something like let's come over here to audiences one more time i can say edit audience segments i can let's say i go into specific ad group you'd want to create a new ad or duplicate your ad group and update your targeting again but let's just say for example instead of targeting these two custom segments i'm just targeting people who are in the market for holiday items and decorations so people interested in purchasing decorations or other items related to holidays or seasonal festivals i can choose this holiday items and decorations and then i can also narrow it with content targeting and say i only want to target people who are on pages that are topics about home and garden so you can choose different types of targeting and see what works best for you create different ad groups because it comes very easy easy to actually look at your reporting for each individual ad group see how many clicks impressions the cost conversion rate you can update your columns to make sure you know how many conversions you're driving so make sure you have conversion value if you're using that make sure you're doing your actual conversions you can do all conversions costs for all conversions so we'll click on apply so you're able to see all of this data and see how your campaign is actually performing so hopefully this all makes sense i would highly recommend using optimized targeting in your ad groups we set that to on when we actually created our campaign if you go into an individual ad group and go into the settings for that ad group that's where you can actually edit your ad group targeting and if you click on edit ad group targeting here you can choose to enable or disable optimized targeting i would highly recommend enabling optimized targeting you can see right here it's turned on you can adjust your audience segments add targeting signals you can also add observations just to see if there's any audiences that are performing well for you so if we come into optimized targeting this is where you can turn it on and off through your ad group settings so coming back over here to our campaign we are ready to start running we submitted our campaign our ads are under review typically takes one to two days it should be a little bit quicker since i've run ads in the past if it's your first campaign it may take 48 hours for your ads to actually start running once they start running let your campaign run for a little bit you need to test you need to see how it's performing don't be freaked out if you spend your budget for a couple days you're not driving a lot of conversions what you want to do is let your campaign run for a few days and then look at how it's performing in terms of your costs per conversion in terms of your conversion rate so this is how to create a display campaign for the next part of the course i just want to give you a brief overview of what the google display network is so you understand exactly where your ads are running so this next part will be all about the google display network 
Today I'm going to be going over the Google Display Network, which is also referred to as the GDN. So I'm going to be answering the question, what is the Google Display Network? So if you're wondering this, the GDN is made up of over 100 million, and a lot of places say over 200 million, websites, apps, and videos where you can run your ads. It's the only display advertising channel that can reach over 90% of the entire internet. So out of every single user who is actually using the internet, the Google Display Network can actually reach over 90% of them. You can target websites, apps, videos, display keywords, and audience segments. You're able to incorporate your location targeting, your language targeting. You're able to incorporate all sorts of things so that you can reach your target audience on the Google Display Network and hopefully drive more conversions for your offer. So let's start with an example, and let's say example one, I'm selling a cooking course. I wanna reach people who are browsing recipe websites, apps, and videos, so anybody who's looking up any types of content related to cooking and recipes, I wanna reach them with my cooking course. I can handpick the placements for my ads by creating a display campaign. Now to go over a few examples, so this is my Google Ads account. Now let's say I wanna create a new campaign here, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say create a campaign without a goals guidance, and we're gonna choose a display campaign. So we have our conversion goals here, we're just gonna keep them as is, click on continue, you wanna name your campaign. You can enter your website here as well. You can actually enter your landing page, which I'll show you why that's important later. I'm not gonna do that for this example. I'm just gonna click on continue. Now you start with your location targeting, your language targeting. There's more settings down here as far as devices, ad schedule, ad rotation. You can set start and end dates. You can choose content exclusions, but I'm just gonna come over here to targeting. So in targeting, the first thing you're gonna see is optimized targeting is set up for you. So optimized targeting helps you get more conversions by using information such as your landing page and your assets. So when we went into create our campaign, you wanna enter your landing page there because it's gonna help them enable optimized targeting for you. Now they'll also use the landing page from your advertisements and all the information from your advertisements. So you don't have to worry too much about entering your landing page there. But if we come over here to add targeting, so one of the things you can do is come here to placements and suggest specific websites, videos, or apps where you'd like to show your ads. So if we click here, what we can do is we can actually search by word, phrase, URL, or video ID, and it's gonna give us a bunch of different websites, YouTube channels, YouTube videos, apps, and app categories that we can target. So let's use my example of recipes here. We'll click on enter. And you'll see it pulls up 471 websites, over a thousand YouTube channels, over a thousand YouTube videos, 500 apps, and let's see if it pulls up any app categories. So nothing for app categories. Now, if we come over here to websites, you can see all of these different websites that we can choose to target with our advertisements. So when someone is, for example, going through allrecipes.com, we can target the entire website, gets 150 million to 200 million ad impressions per week. So we're able to tap into that and hopefully get more people to click on our advertisements and take advantage of our offer. So if we come over here to All Recipes, you'll see a big advertisement right at the top here. And then as you scroll through the websites, you're gonna see different ad placements throughout the website. So over here on the right-hand side, this is another ad that's part of the Google Display Network. So when you target allrecipes.com as one of your placements, that means your ad could show there. Now let's come over here to tasteofhome.com. Let's just say I'm looking up the best chicken noodle soup. So I come here, there's an ad right at the top. This here is a Google Display ad. So if we keep scrolling down, this I don't believe is actually a Google Display ad. This is powered by another advertising channel. But if we come down here, I don't believe this one is either. So this is part of another right here, best landing page builder. Obviously you can see my advertisements are all geared towards me. So Instapage, it's pulling up some different advertisements that I would be more interested in looking at. And then what you'll see is as we scroll down, this advertisement stays right here. So if you create a large advertisement just like this one, then you can have your large ad on tasteofhome.com. If we keep scrolling down, you'll see other advertisements here as well. This right here is an advertisement too. So the next thing I'm gonna look at is we can actually just go to the Google Play Store and let's just say I search recipes in the Google Play Store. You'll see all of these different apps, Food Network, Tasty, All Recipes again, Yumly, all of these different apps, a lot of them run ads through the Google Display Network as well. So as we're building our display campaign, we click on back, we can go to apps, and we might see some of these different apps here as well. So you're gonna find a lot of very popular placements, which include websites, YouTube channels, videos, and apps, where you can target your advertisements as you are actually building out your campaign. 
And quickly, the last thing I wanted to go over here is if we come over here to the right, how to make old fashioned chicken noodle soup, you'll see right here, try your first box free, baking can be challenging. So this is a Google Display Network ad on YouTube that if we click here, it's gonna bring us to this website, bakeitbox.com. So some different places where your ads may show on the Google Display Network, websites, videos, mobile apps. So let's come back over here and we'll go over another example. Let's say I create a headphone brand. I wanna reach people who are actively researching new headphones. I can target in-market audiences and I can create a custom intent audience segment to target with my ads and with my offer. So if we come back over here, we go to our Google ads where we're building our display campaign. Let's say we don't wanna target any placements for this campaign. We decide we wanna target audience segments. So under audience segments, what we can do here is you can search headphones or what I can do is we can come over here to browse and let's say I wanna reach people what they're actively researching or planning. So in market and life events. So I can choose to target an in market segment and let's say I come down here to consumer electronics, audio, headphones and headsets. So I can target people who are actively in the market for headphones and headsets and you can see people interested in purchasing whatever the category is that you select here. So an in-market audience are people who are actively researching these types of products for sale. You can see right now, this is a pretty large audience. So the other thing that we can do is we can either combine this audience with another segment, or what we can do is come to custom audience segments, create a new custom segment, say people who search for any of these terms on Google, and I could do search terms like best headphones, Maybe my headphones are Bluetooth, so I'll do Bluetooth headphones. Maybe my headphones are noise canceling, so I'll do noise canceling headphones. So you wanna enter a bunch of different keywords that will be relevant for whatever product or service you are promoting. Now I could also just do, okay, if somebody's looking for Sony, if somebody's looking for best wireless noise canceling headphones, I can add all these different keyword ideas as well just to keep expanding our audience. And then all you need to do is name this segment. So let's just say headphones audience. We'll come down here, we'll click on save. Okay, so now we have our headphones audience. And what you're gonna see is when you're using a custom intent segment, when we go and we're building our custom intent segment, it's not generally gonna be as large as something like an in-market segment. So for this, the weekly impressions is 500 million to 1 billion. The custom intent audience segment is going to be 100 million to 500 million. So not quite as large. So you tend to get a little bit more of a targeted audience. The other thing that you can do with a custom intent segment is if we come over here and we click on edit, you can actually get some demographic data as well. So gender 83% male, age 39%, 25 to 34. So what I could say is let's only target males. Maybe we'll go 25 to 54 with our headphone offer. Now 18 to 24 is a pretty large pretty large audience as well. So we could just go 18 to 54, we can target males. So you can also incorporate some of the different demographic targeting as well, non-parents. So you can try to choose male, non-parents, and just go 18 to 54, and you're gonna reach kind of the more targeted audience for people who are actively searching some of these different search terms here. So we'll click on save, and this could be who we're targeting. We could either combine these segments. So in this case, we're targeting each of these different segments separately, or what we can do is if we come back, we can combine these two segments, one in market, one custom segment, and people have to be a part of both of these segments in order to see our advertisements. So some different ways to target people on the Google Display Network. Now to finish off the video, some tips and notes, you can target specific demographics. I could say I only wanna reach males 18 to 24 who are not parents. So you can choose your demographics and make sure you're reaching your target audience. You can choose language targeting device targeting and location targeting. You can schedule ads for specific days, times, and dates. So if you say, I wanna run this ad for a month, I only want it to run from Wednesday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can choose all of that for your advertisements. You can target placements, so I went over that, it includes websites, apps, and videos. They also allow you to to target topics and display keywords. So you can try to reach people as they are browsing specific topics, or specific pages that are about certain topics. And then you can target some of the built-in audiences like in-market audiences. You can create some of your own audiences using custom intent. And then last but not least, people have interacted with your business already. So if we come back over, you can target your data in similar segments. So if I click here, since I have my YouTube channel linked to my Google Ads account, 
I can target people who have watched my YouTube videos, who have liked my YouTube videos, who have subscribed to my channel, who have viewed one of my video ads. So you can target people who have actually interacted with your business before. I can target website visitor audiences, so anybody who's been to my website over the last 30 days, people who have purchased. So there's a lot of different audiences I can target. Last but not least, similar segments, those are created from your data segments, so website visitors and YouTube users. And once Google Ads gets enough data, they'll automatically create your similar segments, and you're gonna see similar to all visitors of Beachfront Decor, I can choose this audience and it's gonna find people who are similar to other people who have visited my website. So they're gonna use demographic data, interest data, basically what people are browsing and looking up actively and then put people into some of, the, some of these similar segments as well. Very similar to lookalike audiences on Facebook ads if you're familiar with that. So for the next part, I go over 12 different Google Display Ads best practices, just some things to keep in mind to help you drive the best possible results with your campaigns and really keep your return on ad spend as high as you possibly can. So let's get into it. Today I'm gonna to be going over 12 Google Display Ads best practices and strategies that you can incorporate in your own campaigns. So I'm not gonna be going through each individual strategy into too much detail because I have videos on my channel already that will help you with each individual strategy. So I am going to actually refer you to some of my different videos throughout this video tutorial to show you how to set up things like conversion tracking, to show you what smart bidding strategies are, so you understand how to set up your data segments. So in this, I really just wanna go over best practices. Use this as a checklist to make sure you're using all these things in your campaign if you are able to. So let's get started with number one, conversion tracking and a smart bidding strategy and incorporate value if you're able to as well. So if we come over here to my farmhouse goals account and we go to tools and settings, under measurement, what you wanna do is click on conversions. In this conversion screen, this is where all of your key performance indicators should be. So if you have purchases on your website, you can have people actually accounted for if they do complete a purchase and it's based on your Google Ads account. So you can see here, I have my conversion action here. We have our conversion and then our conversion value. So this is only counting every single conversion as one. So my value is the same exact amount as my conversions. But one of the things that you can do if we scroll down here, so these aren't actual conversions for my business. I set these up as an example several years ago, but you can see here I have different conversion actions. So this one here has over 5,300 conversions, but the conversion value is over 26,000. So you can use conversion value to actually optimize for your revenue or the total value driven to your business. So what that allows us to do, if we come back over here and we open up a display campaign that we ran in the past, so I'm gonna be referencing this old display campaign throughout this video sometimes. But one of the things we can do is if we go to settings for this campaign, since we set up our campaign with the marketing objective of sales, so you generally wanna use sales or leads because then you can actually optimize for your conversions. We have our goal here. So our goal that we're optimizing for is purchases. So the one that I showed you earlier, my affiliate click on my website. So that's what we're optimizing for on our website. And what we can actually do is set our bidding strategy. So you can see here, this is target CPA target cost per action google ads automatically sets our bids to get as many conversions as possible at the target cost per action so i'm telling google with this i want you to try to drive conversions for my business at two dollars and seventy cents or less now if i click on change bid strategy you can see what do you want to focus on so you want to focus on conversions or you want to focus on conversion value so with conversion value you can set a target return on ad spend and say okay for every one dollar i spend for example i want my target return on ad spend to give me a 300 percent return so that means for every one dollar i spend i'm getting three dollars back so some different ways that you can set your bidding strategy but ultimately if we come back over here to our best practices make sure you're using conversion tracking incorporate value if you have a business where you can actually give a unique value to your different purchases whether it's you're selling a course maybe you're selling a software you might be selling a software with three different packages so you can know okay this person came to my website they signed up for the 99 dollar package so that's one conversion with a conversion value of 99 dollars so number one use conversion tracking use a smart bidding strategy so number two Target your data segments. That's gonna be the number one way to get good results with Google Display Ads. Target your remarketing audiences to improve your return on ad spend or ultimately just to continue to lower your target cost per action. So if we come back over here, one of the things you wanna do, and for this I'm actually gonna go into my Beachfront Decor account. So we're gonna to go to Tools and Settings here 
And one of the things we can do is come to Shared Library and come to Audience Manager. Now, I have videos on my channel, and I will put both of them in the video description about conversion tracking, about smart bidding strategies, about how to create your data or remarketing segments and use them for your Google Display Ads campaigns, all these different segments and what they mean, what demographics targeting means, and then as we get to my other strategies, I will show you them as well. So if you go into the video description for this video, there are tutorials for how to do all of this stuff. So let's come back over here, tar targeting your data segments. So one of the things that you can do is if we come to our audience manager, you can come to your data sources and if you link your YouTube channel, if you set up the Google Ads tag, and if you link your Google Analytics 4 account, you can use all of that data to create new segments and you can actually target people who have visited your website or people who have watched videos on your YouTube channel. So if we come over here to segments, we click on the plus sign, you can target website visitors, app users, YouTube users, or customer lists, and you can also create custom combinations. So one of the things I can do is say, okay, Anybody who's been to Beachfront Decor over the last 30 days, I want to target them with my advertisements. So number two, target your data segments. Make sure you're creating a lot of different data segments because that's going to give you similar segments as well. So we're going to come back over here again to our Beachfront Decor and we're going to scroll down. So one of the things I just created was an audience with Christmas pages and an audience with Christmas page titles. So I went over how to do that in my Google Display Ads remarketing tutorial. And what I can do now is I can start targeting people with a Christmas message because I know they've been to my website specifically looking for beach Christmas products. So it's a very niche audience, but then I'm able to target them with my advertisements. And once these audiences or these segments become large enough to actually serve on either the Google Display Network, the Search Network, YouTube, what we're gonna get are these different similar segments. So coming into number three, the three other segments I would target along with your data segments. Now you may wanna create separate campaigns, that just depends on your overall strategy, but one of the things you wanna do is avoid really broad targeting like affinity segments and use similar segments, use custom segments, and use in-market segments. So in-market, those are pre-built segments in Google Ads for people who are actually in the market to purchase something. Similar segments will be created automatically based on your data segments. So if we come back over here and I have my Christmas data segments here, maybe I combine these two audiences into one, what's gonna eventually happen when these do become eligible is I'm gonna get similar segments that I can target. So what Google Ads is actually doing for me is they're building an audience of people that are gonna be very similar to the people who have visited my website looking for beach Christmas products. So when you're targeting these different segments in your campaigns, you're gonna see much better results than if you're using very broad demographics targeting or life events or affinity segments. Focus on these three different segments because if we come over here and we're looking at a farmhouse goals display campaign that I'm running, you can see I am targeting four different segments. I have an in-market segment for home furnishings. So these are people that are in the market in purchasing home furniture. I have people who are similar to all users that have been to my website over the last 540 days. I have anybody who's been to my website over the last 540 days, and I have a custom segment built here. So when you're targeting different audience segments, you're gonna see all of these different options here. Detail demographics, affinity, in-market and life events, your data and similar segments, combined segments, and custom segments. I always say start with in-market and work your way down. So you can work with these four different categories here, detailed demographics, affinity segments, they may be better if you are actually combining multiple audience segments. What I would recommend doing is using some of these different options because they're gonna give you the best results as far as actually driving conversions. Now the other thing that you can do, number four, is incorporate demographics targeting, and number five, you can enable optimized targeting. So again, we're gonna come back over here to my Google Ads account. We're in Farmhouse Goals here still, and we're looking at a, an old display campaign that I ran. Now, I went into Edit Audience Segments to show you those audience segments before. You just select your ad group, and then you wanna target these different audience segments here. Now with demographics, what you may see is you're getting a bunch of clicks from one specific demographic in terms of age, gender, household income, parental status, so you can incorporate demographics targeting as well. So if we click on edit demographics, we choose our ad group. What I can say is I wanna make sure I'm targeting females. I wanna make sure they're at least 35 and up. I 
does parental status will say doesn't matter and let's just say household income I want people to be in the top 40% so what it's gonna do is it's gonna incorporate these demographics so if we click on save demographics then people need to be in the targeted demographics I just set and they're also gonna need to be in one of the audience segments that I'm targeting as well so when you incorporate demographics targeting it allows you to reach your actual target market much better by reaching your ideal customer now the other thing that you want to use is optimized targeting which is going to use the different data segments the different similar segments custom segments in market segments all the different audiences that you're targeting along with your landing page along with your advertisements to try to drive you more conversions at the same price so let's come back over here again to our farmhouse goals campaign and you can easily set up optimized targeting as you are going through the campaign creation process but if you're not sure if your display campaign is already running it so what we can do is we can click on our ad group here and then we're gonna go into settings for our individual ad group so we're looking at our ad group settings so you can't do this at the campaign level you want to do this at the ad group level and what you're gonna see is edit ad group targeting here so we're gonna click on edit ad group targeting and you can see this is where we can incorporate different audience segments we can incorporate different demographics targeting but right here optimize targeting so with optimized targeting on you're gonna see helps you get more conversions within your budget Google may find people beyond your targeting signals information such as your landing page and assets and your targeting signals are going to be used to find people who are going to be more likely to convert so with optimized targeting you're essentially telling Google Ads okay here's who I want to target but if you think there's other people that are going to be likely to convert that match some of the different targeting with my audience segments fit with my demographics targeting based on my landing page based on my ads then I want you to go out and I want you to find them so you click on save and you have optimized targeting turn on you can also turn it on it's turned on automatically for new display campaigns and then you can easily turn it on or off as you're creating your campaign I always run optimized targeting now so I would recommend using it and seeing if it works for you now next one is gonna be number six I'm gonna go through this very quickly but dynamic remarketing best for advertisers running an e-commerce website who have a product feed with dynamic remarketing you've probably seen these ads already a lot of the major major advertisers run them you can actually target people who have visited specific pages on your website so somebody who's looking at specific products on your website you don't need to do anything but upload your product feed and Google Ads is going to be able to use your information to actually target people with your advertisements based on the products they've looked at so if we come back over here again we're gonna come back to our campaign and we're gonna to go to our settings at the campaign level now if you come to the settings for your campaign what you can do here is click on additional settings and as you scroll down here you're gonna see dynamic ads so right now it's saying use dynamic ads feed for personalized ads you'll need to create a feed of your products or services so if you don't have a feed already then you're not gonna be able to do this but just keep in mind you can run dynamic ads this is gonna give you great results because you're actually reaching people who have been to your website who have looked at specific things on your website and you're saying hey come back and purchase these so if you're able to use dynamic ads especially with some type of incentive to come back and purchase they are a great tool for display campaigns so that's one through six conversion tracking smart bidding incorporate value target your data segments target similar segments custom segments in market segments don't be afraid to combine some different segments if you want to incorporate demographics targeting to reach your target audience use optimized targeting through Google Ads and use dynamic remarketing if it works for your business next is gonna be 7 through 12 these ones will be a little bit quicker so a B test your responsive display ads so when we go through and we're creating a campaign one of the things you want to do is make sure you're running at least two responsive display ads in every single ad group so you can see if we scroll down here I only have one ad running so what I would want to do is just click to create a new responsive display ad now the other thing that you can do is upload display ads as well you may want to stick with some of the main sizes what I have found is if I'm running responsive display ads my uploaded display ads really don't get too many clicks or impressions anymore so I would recommend choosing one or the other I've seen better performance from responsive display ads they're easier to manage they're easier to test and it's easier to create a lot of different variations so if we're looking at a B testing our responsive display ads with headlines images and videos one of the things that you can do is as you are creating different responsive display ads just go in keep your description lines exactly the same you may see things like this to improve performance try editing this description so we come back up to improve performance try editing this headline 
So you can take those into account and you can actually make sure that you're using different headlines here. But one of the things you may want to do is you have your advertisement already created. So we'll just come down here. We'll click on cancel. We're going to leave this page. And what we can do is we can take our existing ad here, click on edit, copy the advertisement, and then paste the advertisement, which is going to give us a second advertise responsive display ad here. Make sure we choose the right campaign and ad group. We'll click on done and we'll click on paste. Okay, so I have my new ad paste in here. So we can click on dismiss. You see, this is the existing advertisement I've been running. You can see the performance here. So one of the things that we can do is with our new advertisement, just click to edit it. You don't want to change a ton of things. Otherwise, it's not a true A-B test. So what you want to do is just come in here. And one of the things I like to do is just keep all of the ad copy exactly the same. So we're not going to change anything with the ad copy. And one thing we can do is upload some different videos here. So try different video formats, try different lengths with the video formats. The other thing we can do is add different images as well. So making sure that we're updating some of the different images that we're running, some of the different videos that we're running. So what you could do is first go through your initial advertisement, your initial responsive display ad, look to see if there's any underperforming headlines, look to see if there's any underperforming description lines like we showed earlier, change those, update your ad, and then what you wanna do is duplicate it, upload some different videos, upload some different images here. You don't have to change much else, and that's gonna allow you to actually test different things against each other, whether it's headlines, images, videos. You could just create two completely different responsive display ads that are going to the same offer and see if one performs much better than the other. And then you can always A-B test things over time. So the other thing that you can do very easily is A-B test your landing pages. So same exact concept that we just did. So one of the things that I like to do is if we have our two advertisements here, so we're just gonna click on cancel, we'll pretend like we changed a few things in this advertisement, even though we didn't. And then what you can do is you have your two different advertisements running to one landing page. We can take both of these advertisements, do the same thing, copy and paste. And that's gonna give us two new advertisements and all you need to do is go into the different advertisements, click on edit, and the only thing that you need to adjust through your edit is the final URL. So that's the easiest way to A-B test your landing pages. And as long as your settings are to actually just optimize your ads, then Google Ads will continue to serve your best performing responsive display ads. So when you're looking at your campaigns and we go into settings here and we click on our additional settings, ad rotation, optimize to perform the best performing ads. Now one thing you could do is do not optimize just to allow them to rotate indefinitely for maybe a week, but you have to make sure you remember to go back and optimize them. However, if you are incorporating new ads, usually Google ads will start to rotate some of your different advertisements in and see if any of them are performing better as well. So coming back over here, A-B test your responsive display ads, create multiple responsive display ads, and then A-B test your landing pages. So just see if you're able to get a lift with some new headlines, with some different landing pages, see if any of those help your actual cost per conversion and help your return on ad spend. So seven and eight A-B testing. Number nine, kind of a simple one. I mean, improve your offer, highlight your unique selling proposition. So if you're running your advertisements and you're just not seeing conversions, you need to go back and see what your offer actually is. If all you're doing is saying, here's my business, click on my ad and come see my business, it's not really gonna help you actually drive conversions. So what you're trying to do is reach your, reach your customer's actual pain points. If I have travel deals on my website, for example, if I just put shop our travel deals, it's not gonna work as well as something like using an offer, for example, of saying, escape your nine to five for a week, book seven days, get two of them free with our travel deals. So you're able to actually reach some of these different pain points that people are having while also highlighting what your unique selling proposition is. So in this case, you have travel deals. You're giving people the best possible price on whatever this vacation may be. You're trying to improve your offer by saying, you know, not just book our travel deals, but instead say, escape your nine to five, book seven days, get two of them free. So one of the first things that I, I ever look at if a new client or somebody is telling me that they can't drive conversions is what their actual offer is. Is there some type of discount? Is there some type of actual unique selling proposition that they're not gonna get from anybody else? I could have a credit card advertisement running all day, but if there's no real offer for signing up for my credit card, maybe it's get $300 cash back, maybe it's 
spend this much in the first couple months and get no interest for the next six months or whatever it may be. So improve your offer, highlight what you're actually selling and make sure you understand that if your selling point isn't good enough, you need to make it better or your Google display ads aren't gonna work and you're not gonna drive as many conversions in general. So just improving your offer, highlighting what you're selling, highlighting why people need it and what type of pain problem you're fixing, that all needs to be there in your Google display ads. So coming down to number 10, narrow targeting to relevant content using topics or keywords. So if we come back over to my campaign here again, one of the things you can do is incorporate top content as well. So in this case, I haven't added any topics, I haven't added any keywords, I haven't added any placements. You could add placements as well, but if you start adding placements, just keep in mind, if you start adding placements here, it's gonna limit your audience segment targeting, your demographics targeting, just to the placements where you select. So you may need to come in here and add hundreds of websites, hundreds of YouTube channels, different mobile apps if you wanna target them with your placements as well. So I would recommend using display or video keywords or using topics. I like using topics a lot because I can come in here and quickly say add topics, select my ad group. So we have ad group one here. You can set your topics to targeting or you can set them to observation. In this case, we're gonna choose targeting. Since mine is all related to home and garden, what I can do is just come down here, say, okay, we wanna target pages related to home and garden. Maybe I could find some other options here that are gonna be somewhat relevant to what I'm promoting, but let's just say I just wanna target home and garden topics. Then what that's gonna do is it's gonna limit my actual content targeting to this home and garden topic. So that's gonna include any websites, YouTube channels, apps that are related to home and garden. So you would think theoretically, if I'm targeting some of these different audience segments that are interested in purchasing farmhouse furniture on my website, that's what my actual display ads campaign was for. So if I'm going through and I'm actually trying to target people to, to purchase furniture, then it'd make the most sense to try to target them when they're researching pages about these different topics. Because then they're gonna be more actively in the market for those types of products than they would be if, let's just say, they're listening to their favorite comedy podcast. So different ways to target people and narrow your targeting to specific top content like topics, placements, display or video keywords. I think placements limit it a little bit too much. So what I would recommend is relevant content using topics or display keywords. Now, number 11, remove non-converting audience segments and placements. So you're gonna start getting data for your campaign and I didn't run this campaign long enough to really see anything that, that's that out of place or anything like that. But if you come over here to audiences, so we're targeting different segments for this campaign and we click on show table. So we're looking at our all time data. One of the things you may see is that certain audience segments are getting way more clicks and impressions. Certain audience segments aren't getting any clicks and impressions at all. And certain ones have a higher or lower conversion rate. So one of the things we're seeing here is I have my in market home furnishings audience segment. I have this custom segment I built with furniture search terms. So basically a custom segment with all sorts of farmhouse furniture search terms. So one of the things that we can see if we come back over here to our audience segments is we had actually zero clicks from our similar segment and our all user segment. So what you may wanna do, put them in their own ad group and then pause your other ad groups with different targeting types. Or what you can do is run a completely separate remarketing campaign and you can incorporate your similar segments in your remarketing campaign as well. So let's look at some of this data here. We have our in market at the top and our custom segment at the bottom. So for this, we have 127 clicks, 16 conversions, 815 clicks, 23 conversions. Now you're gonna see my conversion rate was much lower over here for this in-market audience segment, but my average cost per click was also much lower for this in-market audience segment, whereas the custom segment, my cost per click was much higher, my conversion rate was higher. Now looking at the data for both, they actually converted at the same exact cost per conversion. So kind of unique there. And you're seeing for the in-market segment, 815 clicks, a cost of $62. So obviously a much less average CPC. And for our custom segment, it's 127 clicks, $43, but the conversion cost per conversion ended up being exactly the same. So for these, you're not really seeing much out of either audience segment that one is much better than the other. So if you are targeting multiple segments like this, then what you may want to do is actually just pause or remove a segment altogether just while you're testing and looking at other audience segments. What I could also do is combine this in-market segment 
with this custom segment. Since they're performing very similarly, I can look at these audiences the same and say, okay, if I'm promoting furniture, then I have my farmhouse goals furniture audience, and it's a combined segment with this in-market and custom segment. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can come over here to your content, and if we come over here to placements, and we're looking at our placements report all time, you're gonna see you don't have any placements, but what you can do is see where our ads appeared. You can also see where ads showed here as well. So if we click on where your ads appeared, you can see a lot of my ads are going into mobile apps. So there are ways to exclude mobile apps from your campaign. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So if you don't want your ads going through a mobile app, now it's driving conversions through mobile apps. So in this case, it wasn't really the end of the world. So as we scroll down here, you're gonna see there's other websites here as well. So some of these websites are not the greatest websites and you see them all the time in your placement reports. But as you start getting more clicks and impressions from different placements, you can actually come in here and I can exclude some of these different mobile apps. So you select your mobile apps, edit, exclude from campaign or exclude from your ad group. So that's one option that you do have as far as exclusions for some of these different placements. Now what you can also do with your content and exclusions, if you don't want your apps ads to show on mobile apps, what you can do is select here placement exclusions and then you're gonna click to exclude placements you can ex add placement exclusion from your campaign and you come to app categories and it takes a little while, but you have to exclude every single app category. So that means your ads are not going to show up on any app category, which effectively removes mobile apps from your targeting. So you just keep selecting all of these different mobile app categories, click on save. And once you have them all selected, then your ads will no longer show on mobile apps. So coming over here, remove non-converting audience segments and placements. You can remove mobile apps altogether as well using the method that I just showed you. So some different options here going one through 11. Last but not least, number 12, optimize ad rotation, set frequency management. These aren't necessary that you need to do them, but if you are testing your ads a lot, then what you do wanna do is come over here to settings and you wanna just rotate your ads indefinitely for several days, maybe a week or two, depending on how long you're running your campaign for, and do not optimize for a little bit while you start to get more and more data. And then as you have more data, then click on optimize, Google Ads will continue to prefer the best performing ads. So some different options as far as which advertisements are showing up. And then frequency management, let Google Ads optimize how often your ads show. Now, I'm sure you've been browsing the internet before and you feel like you're seeing the same ads over and over again. So to avoid doing that to other people, set a preference on frequency management, manage impressions for the whole campaign to something like, let's say five per day. We click on save and then people aren't gonna see your ads over and over and over again. So this is also called frequency capping. Now they have frequency management, same exact thing. Just make sure you're not showing your ads over and over to the same exact people. So we come back over here. These are some different strategies and best practices. Some of it might seem pretty simple. Some of it might seem a little complex, but going through them one more time, conversion tracking, smart bidding that's optimizing for conversions, incorporate value if you have it, your data segments, similar segments are gonna be based on your data segments, create your own custom segments for people who are actually looking up specific search terms in Google, and use some of the built-in in-market segments incorporate your demographics targeting, use optimized targeting, and if you have a product feed or a service feed, you can use dynamic remarketing as well. A-B test your responsive display ads. There's no downside to running multiple responsive display ads with different headlines, different images, different videos. Maybe A-B testing some of them with just different images, A-B testing some of them with just, just different headlines or ad copy altogether. And then you can also duplicate those, your best performing responsive display ads and A-B test your landing pages. Create a new landing page that, and see if it converts better than your existing landing page. Improve your offer, highlight your unique selling proposition. Always go over that. Make sure that your offer is an offer that you would take up if you saw it on a display ad as you were browsing the internet. Narrow your targeting to relevant content and remove non-converting content placements or audience segments. Last but not least, make sure you're optimizing your ad rotation. You can just set it your ad rotation indefinitely just to rotate until you start getting more data and then go, go right back to optimize to serve your best performing ads and set frequency management so you're reaching different people and your ads aren't following around the same people every single day. So.
One of the most important parts of your Google Display Ads campaigns are your advertisements. And with Google Responsive Display Ads, it's become much easier to manage your advertisements. So in this part of the video, I'm gonna go over all the different Google Responsive Display Ad strategies that I follow and some different best practices you can use as well. Today, I'm gonna to be going over responsive display ads. So if you're creating a Google Display campaign, the new ad format that you use for display campaigns or newer ad format, it's several years old now, is responsive display ads. So today I'm gonna to go over some different strategies. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna promote my beach Christmas decor sale for my website, Beachfront Decor, and I'm gonna create some responsive display ads. So I'm gonna show you best practices throughout this video. So let's get started. We're gonna create a new display campaign and I'm gonna kind of fast forward through some of this. So you wanna start by choosing your campaign objective. We wanna drive sales. So we're gonna use the conversion goal of purchases so we could actually remove the book appointments goal. So we have our purchases conversion goal here that we're gonna be optimizing for. We'll click on continue. And then we wanna run a display campaign. So that's how we create responsive display ads. You could enter your business website here and then we wanna name our campaign. So I'm gonna click on continue. Now obviously the first thing you wanna do, you're setting up your campaign, set your location targeting. We'll just use United States and Canada for now. Set your language targeting here. And then you can come in here to more settings and adjust any of these settings if you need to. I'm not gonna adjust any of this right now, so I generally don't adjust these too much. So what we're gonna do is move on to budgeting and bidding. Now, generally what you wanna do with your budgeting and bidding, set your daily budget. For bidding, we'll just set a daily budget of $25 for now. For bidding, you always wanna focus on conversions. There's different options. How do you wanna get conversions? Automatically maximize conversions, manually set bids would highly recommend just using automatically maximized conversions, and then you can set a target cost per action. So we can set our target CPA here. Let's just say my target CPA is $2.50, and paying for interactions or conversions, you're gonna choose interactions. So typical target CPA for display campaign, 360, so we'll just keep it as is for now. You can always increase or decrease this later. We'll click on next. Now the next thing we wanna do is set up targeting. So they will use our landing page and our assets. So basically everything we do with our responsive display ad, what our landing pages look like, they're gonna use all that information to try to reach the right people at the right time. If we click here to add targeting, what I would do for this campaign is you can adjust your demographics to reach your target market. I'm not gonna use any keywords, topics, or placements. I'm gonna come in here to audience segments. And what I would personally do is you can either search Let's just say beach Christmas. There's probably not an in-market audience for this. And if we look here, let's see. So there's some custom segments. I'd probably just build a custom segment for this, which I can go over in a second. But in-market segments, Christmas items and decor, holiday items and decorations, Christmas shopping, in-store. So none of them are related to the beach. So just because someone's looking up Christmas items doesn't mean they have any interest in the beach. So if I come over here to browse, what I would do is create a custom segment create a new custom segment, do people who search for any of these terms on Google, add a bunch of search terms like beach Christmas de decorations. Okay, so we have people who search for any of these terms on Google, entered a bunch of different Christmas search terms here. Now we can keep expanding this by adding more and more search terms, which is what I would do. So I wanna get to the responsive display ads here. So you're gonna see our segment insights, 96% female, age is generally an older audience here for the people searching for beach Christmas decorations. And then we have some ideas for topics, some parental status ideas, and our total weekly impressions, 10 million to 50 million weekly impressions. So pretty good audience, this should be pretty tight targeted. And then we are also using our optimized targeting. So if we click on done, we have our beach Christmas decorations audience segment we're targeting, we have optimized targeting on, we click on next. So now what we can do is we wanna drive traffic to this page here where I have a bunch of different beach Christmas cards and trees and stocking, garlands, ornaments, all sorts of products for sale. So I wanna drive traffic to this page and try to promote my sale here. So save 20% until December 15th. So we come back over here, we wanna start creating our first responsive display ad by entering our final URL. So this is the landing page where we're sending traffic to. So we'll come here, we'll copy and paste this URL. Next, we'll enter our business name. So it's going to be Beachfront Decor. Now coming down here, since I've created responsive display ads already in this campaign, it already has my logos here. So if we just click on edit, what you wanna do for logos is you wanna enter these two sizes here. So if we click on this one, there's a four by one logo. My dimensions are 956 by 239. And then they also have this one by one logo. 
So I select this one ratio for this horizontal image and then for this square image. So this dimension is only 192 by 192. I should tr try to make this a little bit larger, but for right now, this is what I'm gonna use for my square image. Select one ratio. You wanna use these two ratios at least for your logos. You can enter five different logos if you want to, but if we're using these two ratios for our logos, there's no reason to use that many logos. Now, the first thing you wanna do before logos is images. So at least one landscape image is required, at least one square image is required. So when we click to add new images, you can upload images directly from your website. So I generally upload images based on some of these different product photos. So I go through and try to find some of the most visual product photos. So all of these would be pretty good photos for advertisements just because they're all beach related. Pretty obvious this is a beach themed Christmas stocking. This is a beach themed Christmas ornament. So you can use some of these different images to try to really convey quickly visually what you're promoting. So if I come down here, I can try to find more images. Garlands aren't always the best, but um, I, I pulled some different images from products that I'm selling. So what I did is if we come over back to my Google Ads account, we can upload those images directly from my computer. So opening up this, where all my files are, I have all these different images. So what I'm gonna do is select all of these different images and then open them and upload them directly to my Google Ads account. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna put all of these into my asset library. Now keep in mind, so these are images I just uploaded. Now keep in mind, you see these two images right here. The other option that you can do is come over to free stock images, enter words, phrases, URLs related to your business. They'll generally pull up some relevant images based on what we promote in the past. So if you have some specific images here that could work very well for ads too, you can use these free stock images and watermarks will not appear in your ad. So you can find images here completely free. And let's just say I do beach Christmas. You can see there's a ton of different images here that I can use for my campaign. So I could use something like this. So pretty obvious the Christmas ornaments. And then what I can do is select this image and you can see 1.9 one by one. So this would be a landscape image one by one. This would be a square image. Now you want to click both of these because then what you can do is actually set where the ratios are. So for this, the square image, I would use this. And then for the landscape, I would use this. We'll select two ratios. Now, the other thing you wanna do is come over to your asset library and then start selecting images. We can use at least 15 images. And I would recommend if you have 15 images to use, use all 15. There's no downside to testing with Google ads. So if we come over here and we select some of these different images, let's, when you select it, it might select two ratios automatically. You'll see it right down here, selected two ratios. So with this one, it's selected a landscape, which this looks pretty good here, and a square, which is the entire image. So this is a good image for both ratios, so we'll select two ratios. Now for some images, you may only wanna use a square, so if you select it, and we come over here, select it for two ratios, not the greatest for a landscape image. All you have to do is unselect this here, and then we have our square image, and just make sure you have it cropped exactly how you want it, and we'll select this ratio here. So now we have is five out of our 15 selected images. So what you wanna do is just go through and select all these different images here. Make sure you're using your ratios so all the images look really good. So we have two more images here. We could do this one, I'm just gonna use square. So a lot of times if it's like this, selected one ratio, they just selected the square because if you're looking at a landscape here, not the greatest image for a landscape. So we'll get rid of that and just do a square. So we have that one here. Now, what you wanna do is just make sure you're using both sizes. It's not that you have to have seven squares and eight landscapes, just make sure you're using both sizes so you can actually test some of these different images. There's no problem with uploading a few more square images, a few more landscape images, depending on you know, what you're promoting and what types of images you have. So we come over here, we'll select a few more. So this has square, this will also work for a landscape, select two ratios. Okay, so we've selected all 15 of our images. We can remove any of these here. So if you come in here, you can remove the images or you can click here if you wanna adjust the ratios at all. So we have all of our images, we can click on save. Okay, so we have 15 images here. We have our two logos. So one horizontal logo, one square logo. Next is gonna be videos. So videos are optional. You can see portrait and landscape around 30 seconds work best. So what I did is I uploaded three videos to my Beachfront Decor YouTube channel here. I have a 15 second video, which is a landscape here, another fifth or a 30 second video here, another landscape video. And then I have a portrait video here. So this is 30 seconds as well. I know they all say 31, 31, 16, but I don't know why they report one more second in the back end of YouTube. 
So what you want to do is take your videos, copy the link address for your videos. When you're viewing your video, so if you go to click on to watch the video here, you just want to take this URL. We're going to copy the URL here, and then we're going to come back over to our display campaign. And when you're adding videos, all you need to do is search YouTube. You can see I already have mine here. Search YouTube, enter this URL, and here's where our video is. So we have our first video. If we come over to my asset library, I've already uploaded these two videos. You can see 15 seconds, 30 seconds, just by entering that URL. So you come over here, take the view on YouTube link, copy link address, and that's all you need to do when you're searching YouTube. So we'll select these other two videos here and we'll click on save. Now you wanna use multiple videos. What I would generally do is probably use at least two portrait, two landscape, use some different lengths, use some different video styles. There's no downside to testing, again, with some of these different videos, images. What Google Ads is gonna do over time is serve the best performing ad variations. So that's why you wanna use a lot of images. Make sure you're using all of your ad copy, which we're gonna go over next. So next is going to be our headlines. So we get up to five headlines. You wanna use all five of them. We get one long headline, and then we get up to five description lines. You wanna use all of your description lines as well. So. I'm kind of gonna fast forward through this part a little bit. I'll show you a few of my headlines. So I'm gonna enter some of them now. Okay, so I did my five headlines. I've saved 20% on beach decor. So really nothing to do with Christmas with that one. Coastal inspired Xmas decor. So obviously we have some character limits, can't fit Christmas decor there. Elegant beach Christmas decor. So trying to use some different words that kind of sell it a little bit. Coastal inspired, elegant. So some of these different things that may get people to actually click as they're purchasing Christmas decor for a beach home. One thing I could do is Beach Home Christmas. So I'm trying to think of headlines. And one of the things that helps is looking at this. So Coastal Christmas Decor Sale. You wanna make sure you have headlines that are very descriptive for what people can expect. Coastal inspired Xmas decor, save 20% on beach decor. So I really like headlines like this, just quick to the point. What are you getting when you click through to this link? So here are my five different headlines. The last two, just Coastal Christmas Decor Sale, Beach Christmas Decor Sale. Very descriptive, nothing really too salesy, just here's what you're getting when you click this link. Now with our long headline, this is where you can actually use a little bit more of a description of what people are actually gonna get. And I generally like to use the save 20% with the long headline as well. So let's enter our long headline now. And for the long headline, I have saved 20% on beach Christmas decorations, ornaments, trees, garlands, snowmen, and more. So some different products people might want to purchase for their beach home. So this is our long headline. Again, save 20% on beach Christmas decorations. What I could also do for this one is save 20% beach Christmas decor might fit. So that's another headline we can test, but for now, I'll just keep my five headlines. So now we have our five description lines. These are 90 characters each. So we're going to enter our description lines now. Okay, we have our five description lines here. And what I like to look at is the very beginning of a description line. So we have shop the top rated beach Christmas, discover coastal Christmas decorations, shop beach Christmas decorations, 20% off, save 20% on coastal Christmas decorations. So if we come up here, we're looking at some of these different ad formats, save 20% on beach decor, shop the top rated beach. Elegant beach Christmas decor, save 20% on coastal Christmas decoration. So by putting that in the very beginning, that save 20%, it allows people to really understand, okay, this is what we're selling here. We have a ton of different beach decorations. We want you to come click, see what we have, and you can save 20% on these different beach decorations. So as you're looking through some of these different formats, look through and see if you see any ad variations you really don't like, and it gives you some ideas for changing headlines, changing description lines, but you wanna make sure everything is flowing very well as far as the images you're showing, as far as the headline. Again, you're not gonna have a Shutterstock logo there, but elegant beach Christmas decor, discover coastal Christmas decorations, and, you know, and more at beachfront decor. So all these different ad variations that we can see, I like the way a lot of these look with my description lines, my headlines, it all flows very well with the sale. Now what we can do here is additional format options. I generally leave these clicks. Now using auto-generated video, you could deselect this if you don't wanna do that. Now it brings our ad strength down to good, but they're not actually gonna be using auto-generated video at all because we already added our own video content. So I would recommend using your own video content. We can keep this checked just so our ad strength continues to remain excellent even though it doesn't, doesn't change our advertisement at all. 
Now asset enhancements, what Google ads may do is take some of our images and crop them in different ways to try to show some of the most high impact versions of our images. They may just adjust the way our assets are to essentially try to get the best out of our campaign saying this could improve ad performance. I use asset enhancements because I assume Google ads wants to deliver us the best performance because then we'll spend more money with them. Next is use native formats. You want to select that as well. So for these, I would just leave all three of these additional format options selected. You may want to not use auto generated video if you're not using video. If your ad strength goes down to good, not the end of the world. So some different additional format options you can use. I'm not going to go through ad URL options. I never really change those. Next is going to be more options, call to action text and custom colors. So call to action text, what we can do is for mine, it's shop now. You want to use whatever call to action works the best for whatever it is you're selling. For me, I want people to go to my website and shop beach decor. So this is my call to action text, shop now. You can choose language as well. More options, custom colors. So this is where I'll use my two brand colors here. So, okay, so these are the two main colors for me for Beachfront Decor, the two colors that are in my logo as well. So you may see, show this ad on text and native ad placements, even publisher settings may override your custom color selections. I always leave this selected. I don't really worry too much about the exact color selections, but you'll see kind of flows with the colors of your logo, the colors of your brand. So you may get something like this where the colors don't show, but then you'll have other colors like this that will use your actual brand color. So something to test as you're creating advertisements, but now we're done with our first responsive display ad. So some different best practices you can use. So number one is you should use at least two advertisements per campaign. So if you're running a campaign, I would recommend creating at least two responsive display ads. You can use the exact same videos if you want, like we did. Maybe you wanna adjust some of your headlines. Maybe you wanna adjust some of your images. You really wanna test some different options as far as your advertisements. So with the amount of things they allow us to upload now with 15 images here, we can upload a bunch of different videos. We can upload up to five logos. What you wanna do is create a second advertisement maybe test some different headlines here so my main my first advertisement very focused on save 20 percent on beach decor my second advertisement may be more focused on you know we have the best beach decorations at the best price so you want to use your different unique selling propositions in your advertisements so i'm not going to go through this too much here but ultimately what you want to do test some different images what i would do is edit this use different images for this responsive display ad than I used for the last one. And then we'd go through the entire process. Maybe we want to use some different headlines here, use a different long headline. We can adjust that as well. You can adjust your custom colors if you want. Maybe you just want to go with uh, darker colors or brighter colors, whatever you want to choose, click on apply changes. And then we'll have our second ad here. Now, the other option that you have is let's just say I want to send traffic to this page on my website with all of these different beach Christmas decorations for sale. Now I have another page on my website, a blog style post, beach Christmas decor, nautical Christmas decor. We come in here and there's a bunch of different products for sale. People can click some of these different categories right at the top. For example, beach Christmas cards will bring them down to a complete list of Christmas cards, links out to that specific page. So if I'm saying, I'm not sure which landing page is gonna work better for me, what I could do is take this landing page right here come back over to our google ads account take our first advertisement we created we're going to duplicate it the only thing we're going to change so we're going to leave everything exactly the same except for our final url so we're just going to come to the top with our final url where we're sending traffic to and we're going to get rid of our old url and we're just going to paste our new url so now we have a different landing page and this is how you can a b test landing pages within your Google display ads campaign. And this is one of the best practices I always tell people is try to use multiple landing pages, even if you're just duplicating your ads, which is what you want to do. So you can a B test which landing page is actually deriving better results. Now for me, I already know that for the most part, these landing pages work better than my blog post style landing pages. I think it's just people are used to shopping an e-commerce type store. Sometimes people get to a blog post, they see too much text, they're out of there. So you can test some of these different landing pages here, see what works best for you. All you have to do is enter that new final URL, come down to the bottom and we click on apply changes. And now we have, we scroll over a third responsive display ad. So if you create your first two responsive display ads, same landing page, adjust some of the different images, adjust some of the ad copy, you can test with your responsive display ads all day. 
If you want to use six responsive display ads to use one to test images, use another one to test ad copy, and then you can duplicate all of those, test landing pages, you can test your responsive display ads a ton. And that's really a best practice that I want to make sure you understand if you are creating display campaigns, use responsive display ads and just keep testing all of these different ads. So when you're creating new ads, just keep creating new ones. You could also upload display ads if you want to to run alongside your responsive display ads. I have found that for the most part, these are going to run way more than my uploaded display ads. So we click on next and what we can do is launch our campaign. So they'll check for errors. We're all ready to launch our campaign. We have our location set. We have our targeting set. We have our responsive display ads. I would obviously create a fourth one here and adjust some of the different options. But now they're saying our targeting signals are too narrow, not too concerned about it right now. So if we're not if we're not reaching our daily budget, then I'll always expand my targeting signal. So click on publish campaign and we are ready to run this campaign and see how our responsive display ads are performing. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to audience targeting for Google ads and specifically on the Google display network, how you can target different audiences based on what they're interested in and based on some of the things that they are doing that Google has tracked them doing over time. So the next part of this video will be different types of audience segments that you can actually target with your advertising campaign. So let's get into audience targeting. Today, I'm gonna to be going over Google Ads audience targeting and everything you need to know about targeting audiences for your search, display, and video campaigns. So I'm gonna get started by creating a new campaign to go over exactly how it works. And what I'm gonna do is just pretend I'm gonna create a new display campaign so I can go through all of the different audiences that you can target with your advertisements. So we're gonna click on display here. You can choose one of your conversion goals, but we don't really need to worry about that too much here. You can enter your website, name your campaign, and we're gonna click on continue, which will bring us to the new campaign screen. So it's gonna start with location and language targeting, which will also make up your audience, where they're located, and the languages that your customers speak. So you always wanna start with the locations you're targeting, and you wanna enter your language targeting as well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to targeting, and you're gonna see first, optimized targeting is set up for you. So this is fairly new in Google Ads, where what you can do is opt into optimized targeting, which allows you to get more conversions by using information like your landing page, your assets, all the information Google Ads has about what you're trying to target, where you're sending traffic to, and what your ads look like. They're gonna use that to try to find more conversions for you. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on ad targeting, and down here at the bottom, you're gonna see keywords, topics, and placements. I just went through this in my previous video where I went over Google Ads content targeting. So if you want more information about keywords, topics, and placements, you can find it at that video. I will link it in the video description so you can easily find it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here with demographics, because that also includes some of the different audience targeting that you can use. And then where we're gonna spend most of our time is with audience segments. So we're gonna start with demographics pretty self-explanatory you can choose your targeted demographics gender age parental status and household income so what you really want to do with this is you could either leave it wide open if you just want to reach anybody that's in your different audience segments or what you can do is say something like I want to reach people who are 25 to 64 so you could exclude some of these ages here and then you're reaching people 25 to 64 maybe you want to reach parents and maybe you want to reach females so what you can do is choose those options as you're targeting your demographics and then all you need to do is click on done and then what you can do is go through and add more targeting using audience segments and you're going to suggest who should see your ads and it's going to layer in this demographic targeting as well now in this case i'm just going to leave it wide open as i go through some of these different examples so we're going to check all of these again we're going to click on done and we have no targeted demographics now just leaving it wide open to everybody so what we're going to do is we're going to go over audience segments and when you use audience segments a lot of times it's going to opt you right into the search screen so let's just say for example i want to target people who are interested in investing what you can do is just search investing here and it's going to come up with different audiences that you can target you're going to see some affinity audiences i will go through all the different audiences uh, and what they mean in a moment but you can target affinity audiences you can target in market audiences you can target homeowners. So some different options you have here just by searching investing. So whatever it is that you are promoting, whether it's some type of investing platform, whether it's some type of food and drink product, maybe you're trying to target people who are looking for baby toys, 
all you need to do is enter a search term here and you're going to find some different audiences that will be relevant for your campaign but what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this and we're going to come back over to browse and i'm going to go through these from top to bottom so the first thing is detailed demographics so this one's pretty self-explanatory who they are and what you're going to see is from this drop down you can target parental status so parents of infants toddlers preschoolers grade schoolers and teens come back up here we could target marital status so three options there we can target education so current college students highest level of educational attainment and you can target home ownership status so who they are is not a bad option as far as targeting segments now one thing to keep in mind as we look over here on the right hand side under weekly estimates you're going to see available impressions based on your targeting and settings but not your budget and bid so right now it's saying we haven't really layered in any targeting at all so our impressions is 10 billion plus so when you start targeting segments one thing to keep in mind is let's say i come over here to home ownership status and i target renters so what this is saying is anybody who rents this is who i am targeting with my advertisements now let's say i also use detailed demographics and i come over here to education and i do current college students so right now what this is saying is i want to target either current college students or renters so it's not layering both of these different targeting options in if we click on done it's going to target both of these separately so what this means is we're targeting current college students or renters now they can be current college students and renters but right the way we have this set up is we have current college students or renters so when you're targeting segments keep in mind it's not going to layer all of your different targeting so if you start targeting some of these different segments and you say okay i want to reach people who are married who are let's say parents of toddlers so i can reach people who are married parents of toddlers but again it's going to target parents of toddlers it's going to target marital status married it's going to target education and it's going to target this home ownership status all separately so all of these are four different audiences that will all be targeted within our campaign so keep that in mind as you are using your targeting so if we're going through and we're going through some of these different options here that's number one is detailed demographics so you can choose a detailed demographic but keep in mind it will be a very broad audience so next is going to be affinity audiences what their interests and habits are these are also very broad audiences i wouldn't really recommend using detailed demographics or affinity audiences if you're trying to run a direct response you need return on ad spend you need to drive conversions these audiences are going to be much too broad and i would highly recommend starting with in market and below if you're trying to reach people and trying to drive conversions still might not have a positive return on ad spend with some of these different audiences because display ads do not perform as well as search ads but as we get into affinity audiences what their interests and habits are if we come over here you're going to see some broad segments so banking and finance we'll click on the drop down avid investors now this is people who actively invest their money, follow financial markets, and regularly read financial or business news. The thing to keep in mind here is you are targeting a broad audience of people who have shown some level of interest in investing. And that's going to go the same for every single affinity segment. If you go into beauty and wellness and you see someone who frequently visits salons, that could be a massive audience that includes all sorts of people who visit different types of salons. For example, if we scroll over here, it's going to say people who frequently visit establish establishments that provide beauty related services hair salons nail salons tanning salons day spas so if you're looking at top related audience segments antivirus and security software frequently attends live events painting services so three much different categories so when you are targeting affinity segments keep in mind these are very very broad segments of people so if we come into food and dining coffee shop regulars cooking enthusiasts foodies so it might not be a bad idea for example you're trying to promote a fast food restaurant you have some broad message you can use this fast food cravers audience for example you're working in marketing for one of the large fast food restaurants they have a new product out that's where this might be a good place to actually target an affinity audience if you are running the advertisements for a small restaurant and let's just say the restaurant fits into a fast food category targeting this audience is probably not going to be the best idea because you're going to have a massive audience of people and a lot of them might have no interest in your restaurant so keep that in mind as you do target affinity audiences these are people with certain interests and habits but they're going to be very broad groups so even if you look at the sizes of some of these different audiences 
let's go to lifestyles and hobbies and let's say business professionals. Even the size of this audience here, as far as weekly impressions, ranges from 10 billion to 1 trillion. So it's a massive audience and it's gonna say people with different types of business related jobs. So if you are trying to tap into a large, broad audience, that's where affinity audiences could come into play. I would say detail demographics and affinity are very, very broad. You're gonna have large audiences, a ton of available impressions, but what you're giving up is some of that relevancy and targeting. Now where you're gonna get better relevancy and where you're gonna reach people who are closer in an actual decision-making process to purchasing something is in-market and life events, specifically more in-market audiences. So let's click over here and let's start with life events here on the bottom. You're looking at some of the biggest life events, so college graduation, job change, marriage, moving, and they all have drop downs as well. So let's just say we click on moving, you're gonna see moving soon or recently moved. So if you wanna to try to craft a message, just moved into a new house, here are some of the best people to help with painting, with whatever it might be. Moving soon, maybe if you're a moving company, you say, have you got your move ready yet? And you have a moving company message. So that's where some of these life events can be very useful, trying to reach people as they are in the process of some of these large, large life events that we all go through. Now, the other option here is in-market segments, and in-market are people who are actively researching or planning some of these different categories. So for example, we'll come down and let's just say business services. We click on the dropdown for business services. We click on the dropdown for advertising and marketing services. You're gonna see SEO and SEM services. So these are people who are actively looking for search engine optimization companies, search engine marketing companies to either help grow their brand organically or with paid advertising. You're gonna see some of these top related audience segments, advertising and marketing, email marketing, temporary and seasonal jobs, top YouTube categories, you're gonna see all pretty relevant for the most part. And up at the top, you'll also have a description for all of these different audiences. People who influence purchasing decisions for services that provide search engine optimization or marketing. The other thing that you're gonna see is the weekly impressions for in-market segments are lower than the weekly impressions forecasted for some of the different affinity audiences, and that's because you're reaching people as they're in the process of buying something. So let's scroll down and let's come down to sports and fitness. We'll click on the drop down. Let's say sporting goods, golf equipment. So somebody who is in the market for golf equipment has shown through either some of the videos they're watching, some of the websites they're visiting, some of the different things that they're searching into Google, they're showing that they have an interest in purchasing golf equipment. So if you are a company that sells new golf equipment, used golf equipment, this would be an audience to use for your campaigns and see how it performs and if you can drive conversions with an audience like this. So these are some of the different in-market audiences. The other thing you're gonna see is, let's come back over here and let's do our search for investing again. So you're gonna see all these different affinity audiences here that come up. The other thing you're gonna see are different in-market audiences. So people looking for automated investment services, investment training, online stock trading, so I would highly recommend making a search because it's gonna come up with some different in-market audiences that may not be available as you come through, go to browse and you click on in-market and life events. They're not gonna have all of these different in-market audiences there. So that's why I would recommend searching because it's gonna come up with some of these different built in-market audiences that other people are targeting that might be a little more relevant than some of the larger in-market audiences that they show just from the drop down here where you come into your in market and life events and you have your in market segments drop down there's going to be more when you actually search so keep that in mind as you are targeting different audiences now the last three here as we come down into these different options the the one right here how they have interacted with your business that's going to be the best aud audiences that you can target it's your data in similar segments so if we click on the arrow to go over Similar segments are automatically created as you start creating your website visitor audiences, as you start creating your YouTube audiences, as you upload customer lists, and as you upload mobile app audiences as well. So if we start here in my website visitors audience, you're gonna see all users of my website, Beachfront Decor. This is a 30-day audience, so anybody who has visited my website over the last 30 days, you can see all visitors 30 days, now we come into similar segments, you're gonna see similar to all users of Beachfront Decor, similar to all visitors over the last 30 days, and you have similar to all visitors AdWords. So if I click on similar to all visitors 30 days, 
these are audience segments that Google Ads is automatically going to build for you. And as you start creating some of your data segments, like website visitors, like some of your YouTube viewers, you're going to have more and more data about those people and those audiences. And if they are large enough audiences, what Google Ads is going to do is find similar people to the people who are visiting your website, watching your YouTube videos, similar to the people on your customer lists. So if we come over here to similar to all visitors and we just look at the size of the audience, 10K to 200K. So it's not a huge audience. And the way they describe it is automatically created expanded segment with interest similar to the people in all visitors of 30 days. So if I take my website visitors, all visitors of 30 days, let's see the size of this audience, 1K to 5.1K. So it's not a massive audience. And you see if we target it over here, our impressions are only 3.1 million available impressions. So that's a weekly estimate. So it's not a huge audience, but this will give you the best possible results because people who have already visited your website have already shown some level of interest and they are much further down the funnel, as you would say, of buying something because they've been to your website, they've been researching what you have to offer, you retarget them with one of your messages and this is the way to do it is with website visitor audiences. Now, if you're wondering how to create your data segments and then the similar segments, what you need to do is go to tools and settings and under shared library, you wanna to go to audience manager. So I'm gonna open my audience manager here and when you open your audience manager, it's automatically gonna to go to segments and it's gonna show you your data segments. So you're gonna see website visitors here, YouTube viewers. So as we come down and we keep coming down, you're gonna see a custom combination segment. So this is a combined audience, YouTube and website retargeting. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have all of these different segments that you can create and you need to use your data sources. So I'm not gonna go through how to connect some of these different data sources in this individual video, but you can watch some of my videos on my channel about remarketing and how to use website remarketing, YouTube retargeting. I'll link them in the video description so you can easily find them. So if we come in here, some of the different data sources I have, I have linked my YouTube channel to my Google Ads account. So that will keep track of all the people who view my YouTube videos, subscribe to my channel, like videos, share videos, basically anything anyone does to my YouTube channel, I can target them with advertisements my Google Ads tag, which I implemented on my website with Google Tag Manager. So this keeps track of my hits over the last 24 hours and I can create audiences based on this Google Ads tag because it's collecting information about people who are visiting my website. I have linked my Google Analytics 4 account to my website. I'm not actively using Firebase, but if you have a mobile app, you can link your app analytics, you can link Google Play. So you can link all of these different accounts to your Google Ads account and it's gonna allow you to target different audience segments with your campaigns. And these are gonna be the top performing audience segments, again, because if somebody's already visited your website, they've shown some level of interest beyond the people who are just in some broad affinity audience or some in-market audience that Google Ads has automatically created. You can also link Zapier, which is a third-party platform, supports importing customer lists into Google Ads. And the other thing that you can do is if we come over here to segments, you click on the plus sign, you're gonna see you can create website visitor audiences. So once you link some of those data sources and you click on website visitors, I can say I wanna use the data from my Google Analytics 4 account and target people who have visited specific pages or who have added something to their cart. So when you click on the plus sign, you can create more segments here. App users, so people who have downloaded your mobile app, YouTube users. The other thing you can do is upload a customer list. So if we click on the plus sign to upload a customer list, the one thing you need to keep in mind, customer lists can only be used on the observation setting without bid adjustments and for exclusions. So the only way to actually target customer lists with your advertisements and to get similar audiences for customer lists is you need a Google Ads account with at least 90 days of history and no policy issues. And you also have to have over $50,000 in spend lifetime in your Google Ads account. So since I don't have that for this account, I can upload my emails, phones, mailing addresses, user IDs, mobile device IDs, upload customer data from data platforms. So you could do all of these different things here, but I can only use that customer list as an exclusion for my campaigns 
or in the observation setting with no bid adjustments to see how that customer list is performing for my different campaigns. So keep that in mind if you are uploading a customer list, you do need to meet those requirements in order to target it with your advertisements. But what you can do is name your audience segment. They have a template here so you can upload your CSV file, use their template, and it needs to comply with their formatting guidelines. So you upload that file, you can set a membership duration, you can write a description if you want to, upload and create. And then what Google Ads will do is take the information from your customer list to actually match people who are on the Google Display Network, Google Video Network, or who are searching for your keywords through the Google Search Network. So let's come back over to our display campaign, and that goes over your data in similar segments. So you need to connect some of those different data sources to your audience manager, to your Google Ads account, so that you can actually target YouTube users, website visitors, mobile app users, and some of your customer lists. And then similar segments will be created automatically as those audiences get larger and larger. Now you can also use custom combination segments. For example, I combined my 30 day all visitors list with people who have watched my YouTube videos, just as an example, so I can target that as a combined segment. So that goes over, coming back over here, some of your data in similar segments and then combine segments so you can create combined audiences and add some of your different segments here. So if you come over to segments, it's gonna pull up some of the ones that I've targeted recently. So all visitors over the last 30 days, I can target people who are in the market for home decor. I can target home decor enthusiasts. So you can target some of these different segments here, affinity in market, your website visitors, and then you can create a combined audience. So you click on create and it will put every single audience into one large audience segment. Now, what we can do is I would say, okay, I wanna reach people in this home decor in market segment, narrow your segment. So what we're saying is they have to be in this home decor in market segment. And then if we come over here and we come over to detail demographics, I can say, and their parental status, they are parents of toddlers, one to three years old. So this is how you can combine some of these different audience. So before when I was telling you that if you're using some of these different detailed demographics, it's gonna target them all separately. So this is how you can combine some of them. So what you can do is say, I want someone in this home decor segment who's in market for home decor, and I want parents of toddlers who are one to three years old. Obviously I wouldn't combine these two segments because they don't really make sense to combine, but what you could do is say, I want someone who's in the market for toys, who's also a parent of a toddler one to three years. So you're able to combine some of these different segments to create really a much more targeted audience. So this is how you can use some of these different combined segments. So coming back over here, that's combined audience segments. You can take some of these different options here as far as affinity audiences, detailed demographics, in market, and it's a great option if you are trying to reach people and you're trying to keep things really targeted with your advertisements. Now, last but not least, as far as targeting goes, is custom audience segments. So with custom segments, what you can do is click on the plus sign here to create a new custom segment. You can do this through the campaign creation process, or you can do it through your audience library. And what you can do is name your segment here, and then you have two different options. Include people with the following interests or behaviors. People with any of these interests or purchase intentions, or you could do people who search for any of these terms on Google. I personally prefer to do people who search for any of these terms on Google, and what you can do here is enter a bunch of different keywords that would be relevant to whatever it is you're promoting. So if I'm promoting beach decor, for example, I can say use a term like beach decor, I can say coastal decor, I can say nautical decor, and then they're gonna come up with some different search term ideas as well. So you can find some of these different options here, nautical gifts, large nautical wall art. So I can enter all these different keywords and what Google Ads is gonna do is it's gonna create an audience of people. You can see it's a very tight audience, 10 million to 50 million weekly impressions. It's not, it's not like a massive audience with 10 billion plus impressions. You're reaching people who have shown some level of interest in some of these different keywords, whether they've searched them directly in Google or they've searched very similar terms on Google. What Google Ads is gonna do is use those terms as interests or purchase intentions. Now, if you come up here and you do people with any of these interests or purchase intentions, and we click up this at the top, you're gonna to see it's a similar amount of weekly impressions overall, but I would prefer to just use the people who search for any of these terms on Google, because it's gonna to try to find people who are closely trying to purchase some of these different 
products related to the keywords that they're entering. So if I'm trying to promote my beachfront decor website, maybe I have some type of sale going on, then what I can do is do people who search for any of these terms, enter a bunch of relevant terms based on what I'm promoting. You can enter your SEO keyword list here. You can enter some of your top search terms as far as your Google ads campaigns. So you can enter all sorts of different keywords here, name your segment, and then target it with your advertisements. And where it really becomes useful is if I say beach Halloween keywords. So what I can do is try to find relevant Halloween keywords, nautical Halloween decor, coastal pumpkins, coastal Halloween decor. I have 50 million to 100 million impressions, people who are showing a, a large level of interest in beach Halloween decorations. So I can target that with my advertisements, send them a message related to beach Halloween decorations, send them to a landing page that's filled with beach Halloween decorations. And it's one of the best ways to target people based on what they're actually searching in Google. So if we click on done here, this is how you can target some of these different segments. And what I would, how I would go about this is the best performance is gonna come from your data and similar segments. And then what you can do is use some of these custom segments Try to combine audience segments if you want to use some detailed demographics, if you want to incorporate some in-market audiences. If you're looking for more of a broad audience, so you're going for more brand awareness, you're going for more product consideration, that's where you want to use affinity audiences, detailed demographics, and you can even incorporate some of these and use them as combined segments as well. Now, once you have your audience segment set up here, you click on done and you go through the process of creating your campaign I would highly recommend always using optimized targeting because it's going to use your landing page, it's going to use your assets, and it's going to allow you to find more people to drive conversions. And when you are creating a campaign, I would highly recommend creating a campaign with a sales or leads objective focused on your conversions so that you can get the most out of your campaign no matter who you're targeting. So if you have any questions about audience segments, again, you can find your audience manager right when you're creating a display campaign and just go directly to your audience manager connect some sources and you can start to actually target people who are visiting your website or watching your youtube videos or interacting with your business in some way so hopefully these all make sense these are all the different audiences you have in google ads to target and then when it comes to some of the different campaigns you can target we're just going to come over to the google ads help screen so with display campaigns affinity custom segments detailed demographics life events in market and your data segments now search you can target affinity detailed demographics in market and your data segments with search what you can do is actually target you're obviously targeting people who are searching specific keywords so you can incorporate these audiences as well and choose to either target them or observe them so if i choose to observe an affinity audience all i'm saying is i want to see how this affinity audience performs for my targeted keywords and then you can actually adjust bids up or down for your search campaigns for people who are in those audiences so it can be very useful for in-market segments. It can be very useful for your data segments. You can, for example, increase your bids by 25% for somebody who has visited your website over the last 30 days. So keep that in mind as you're running search campaigns. You can incorporate your audience segments as well. And then what you can also do is say, I wanna target people who are searching my keywords and make sure they have to be in this specific affinity audience. So you can do that as well for search campaigns if you wanna keep things very, very targeted. That's one option that you have. Now for video, it's open up to pretty much everything as well. Affinity, custom segments, detailed demographics, in market and your data segments. So as you're running these different campaigns, just keep that in mind. You can incorporate all these audiences and try to get the most out of your campaigns by finding the audience segments that perform the best for your business. Now that you watched the portion on audience targeting, one of the best audiences to target are people that have already engaged with your business. So the next portion of the video will go over Google Display Ads remarketing specifically to people who have visited your website and there's gonna be a little bit more insight into people who have watched some of your YouTube videos, but I'm gonna go over remarketing in the next portion of this video. Today, I'm gonna to be creating a Google Display Ads remarketing campaign and I'm gonna show you how to do it from start to finish. So you're here in your Google Ads account, and what you need to do first is you need to make sure that you have an active Google Ads account, and you also need a Google Analytics 4 account for your website. So this is where you need to start in order to have the ability to even create remarketing audiences so that you can target them in your Google Ads campaign. So if we come over here, here's the step-by-step -step process that we're gonna go through today. So first, you need a Google Ads, Google Analytics 4 account you need to enable Google Signals data collection in Google Analytics 4. 
So that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna come back over here to our Google Analytics 4 account. So I'm in here for Beachfront Decor. And what you wanna do is come to the admin screen for your Google Analytics 4 account. You wanna to go to data settings and you wanna to go to data collection. So under data collection, you're gonna see Google Signals Data Collection and you need to make sure you have this checked on. So you may need to click this here if you haven't already. It will come over here, show the check mark. Then the other thing you need to do is come to the bottom and make sure you acknowledge the user data collection acknowledgement down here at the bottom. I acknowledge that I have the necessary privacy disclosures and rights for my end users for the collection and processing of their data, including the association of such data with visitation information Google Analytics collects from my site and or app property. So that's where you need to start. That's gonna be the first two things. Create your Google Ads account, create your Google Analytics 4 account, make sure you enable Google Signals data collection in your Google Analytics 4 account, and then what you wanna do is link your two accounts together. So my accounts are already linked. It's very easy to do, especially if you're using the same exact Google account for both. So if we come over here to Google Ads, we go to Tools and Settings. Under Setup, you're gonna see Linked Accounts. So you can see my linked accounts here. You can see Google Analytics, GA4, and Firebase. And I also have my YouTube channel linked as well. So I'm really going to focus this Google Display Ads remarketing on more website remarketing. But I'll show you the different options you have as far as YouTube and other things you can actually upload a customer match list. So you could also incorporate an app if you want to. So there's different ways to actually remarket to anybody who's interacted with your business in really any way, shape, or form. So with YouTube here, I have that linked. With Google Analytics 4, I have that linked. If we come over here to Manage and Link, if you haven't linked already, you're gonna see a Details link. So you wanna click on Details, and when you go into Details, it will automatically usually pull up whatever Google Analytics account that you have. So I have Google Analytics, the old version, the Universal Analytics here, and because I have different Universal Analytics accounts for Beachfront Decor, you can see these are not linked. So all I really need to do to link my account is click on the link button over here. So it's really that simple to link an account. So if we come back over to linked accounts for GA4, we have our linked account here. We come to manage and link and you're going to see it is these both are linked together. So that's all you need to do next. So if we come back over here, to number three, link your Google ads and Google analytics Four account. This is important because we enabled Google Signals data collection in Google Analytics 4. So now we can actually create audiences in Google Analytics 4. But if we don't have our GA4 account linked to our Google Ads account, then they really can't communicate. They don't know what audiences we've created. So once you link them, you're able to import those audiences directly into your Google Ads account automatically every time you create one. So what we can do is next create your data, which remarketing has also been rebranded to your data segments. So if you see your data, that just means you're interacting with people who have already interacted with your business. So we're gonna create your data segments or audiences in Google Ads, or you can do it in Google Analytics 4. So let's come back over here. We're in Google Ads already. So let's come over to Tools and Settings. Under Shared Library, you're gonna see Audience Manager. So you can see some of my different segment names here. So all users of Beachfront Decor, all visitors over the last 30 days. So the all users of Beachfront Decor is automatically created when we link our Google Analytics 4 and Google Ads account, and we set up Google Signals data collection. So I'll show you that in a minute, but what we can do when we're in our audience manager, you're gonna see segments here. And what you're gonna see is your data segments, which essentially is just another way of saying remarketing audiences. So where you see your data segments, that means people who have either interacted with your YouTube channel, your website. If we click on the plus sign here, we can upload a customer list. So that's another option that you have. Now keep in mind, there are certain thresholds that you need to meet in your account in order to target a customer list. The main one being you need at least $50,000 in spend. So if you don't have that, then you may not even wanna bother uploading a customer list. But if you do have a customer list, a, an email list or anything like that, you might as well upload it here. YouTube users, so if you have an active YouTube channel, you can target people who have interacted with your YouTube channel or videos. So for example, for Surfside PPC, I could target anybody who watches this video with advertisements. I can target anybody who subscribes to my channel. I can target anybody who views any video. So you can target all of these different visitors and viewers as they are either going to your website, as they are giving you some of their information, or as they're watching your videos on YouTube. 
So the other thing is app users. So people who have downloaded your mobile app, you can target them with your advertisements. But what I'm really gonna focus on today are website visitors, people who visited your website or landing pages. So if we click on the plus sign here, what we could do is create a new audience segment, website visitors. You can name your segment here and segment members will be visitors of a page or you could do visitors of a page who've also visited another page, visitors of a page who did not visit another page and visitors of a page with specific tags. So you have different options here as far as your segment. So what we could do is say visitors of a page that where the page URL contains and enter any word here that would be useful for your business. So I'm starting to get more towards Christmas with beachfront decor. So people who are actively looking up beach Christmas decorations. So what I can say is if my page URL contains Christmas or I could say page URL contains ornaments or page URL contains and come up with every single Christmas word I can possibly think of related to the different types of products that I'm selling. So it may be Christmas trees. So since I already have Christmas here, that would account for that. We have ornaments here. I could do something like garlands. I can do or, and we could do something like wreaths. Could also just keep it as wreath and garland and ornament, and we could do or, we could do holiday. So we can create this audience, and what it's gonna allow me to do is actually target people who visit my Christmas pages with a specific Christmas message. So I can take the page URL contains and use all these different words here, try to find more and more words as well. I know there's, I could do stockings and tree topper and all sorts of different things, but for right now, we'll just keep these different page URL contains and a word. Now, if we click here, you could also see refer URL. We could do page URL equals, starts with, ends with, does not contain, does not equal, does not start with. So you have a ton of different options. Now, the more traffic you drive to your website, over, honestly, the better your audiences are gonna be. I worked with a client that got millions and millions of visitors a month, and we were able to create all sorts of different data segments based on the website visitors because they're visiting so many different pages and categories of pages. You're able to put people in all these different buckets, and that's ultimately what you wanna do to understand what people are looking at on your website. So we have these different page URL contains, different holiday words. Let's just add stockings, why not? We'll just do stocking because it'll match both of them. We'll do garland because it'll match both. We'll do ornament. Okay, we have Christmas, ornament, garland, wreath, holiday, stocking. Okay, pre-fill options. We can pre-fill the segment with people who match rules within the past 30 days. I generally keep them pre-filled because we might as well start getting people in our audience immediately. People stay in this segment and let's just say for 90 days. So anybody who's looking up beach Christmas decorations over, you know, in the past 30 days, over the next 30 days, over the next 60 days, the next 90 days, I want to target them with my ads. So we're gonna give it a longer membership duration of 90 days, and then we can enter a description here if we want to. Let's make sure I name my segment. Okay, so Christmas pages, and we could do page URL. Okay, so we'll scroll down here, and we will click on create segment. So that's one option as far as creating an audience. And now you can see Christmas pages, page URL. This is populating now. It's a website visitors rule-based audience. So they're able to use the data that I've given them from my Google Analytics 4 account to create this audience. Now let's come back over here to Google Analytics 4. And the one thing I wanna go over now, and if you come to configure and you go to audiences, this is where you can create your audiences and these audiences will automatically go into your Google Ads account. So you can see here, I have all users and I have purchasers. So two different audiences here, they're both created on October 28th, 2020. So as soon as I enabled Google Signals data collection, those audiences were created. Now, if we come over here to my audience manager, you're gonna see all visitors, Google Ads, purchasers of Beachfront Decor, but the other one is actually all users of Beachfront Decor. So this is my Google Analytics for property users. Right now on search display, I have a 9,000 people, or search in YouTube, I have 9,000 display, I have 5,900. So it's a large enough audience that I can start targeting them with my ads. And the other thing that's gonna happen once you have eligible audiences, so right here, my YouTube viewers, too small to serve because I don't really get a lot of YouTube views on my Beachfront Decor channel. So my website visitors audience, once you have an eligible audience here, we scroll down, you're gonna see similar to all users of Beachfront Decor. 
on display 1 million to 2 million people that are similar to the people in my audience. And this is gonna automatically update over time. So it's your similar segments are automatically created based on your data segments. So this website visitor segment that we have right here, the similar audiences or similar segments are automatically gonna be created once those are eligible. And then you can start targeting them across search, YouTube, display, and discover campaigns. So if we come back over here, Let's come back over to Google Analytics 4. What you can do here is you can create audiences directly in Google Analytics 4. And what they're gonna do is they're automatically gonna go into your Google Ads account. But let's just come back over to Google Analytics. They have some suggested audiences, so purchasers, seven day lapse purchasers, they have little descriptions here for each of them, non-purchasers, recently active, seven day lapsed users. We come over here to templates, they have demographics, technology, acquisition, so if we click on demographics, I can say include users where and just say age is one of, and let's just say we do 35 plus audience. So I can say, okay, I wanna make sure I'm targeting, oh, I didn't include it, but we'll make sure we include it. Age is 35 plus, let's say membership duration, we'll just set to maximum limit. So is one of, and we'll click on apply. Okay, so now age, they need to be 35 and up. So. What we're doing is we're saying anybody who is 35 and up, we want them to add them to this audience. We click on save. And now this audience will automatically go into our Google ads account. Again, not immediately. So it's going to take a little bit. So we're not going to target this one right away, but let's click on new audience and show some different ideas as well. So if we click on create a custom audience, it's going to say include users when you can name your audience up here. You can add a description, you can add conditions and you can add sequences. So again, this does work the best for websites that get a ton of traffic because you can really add a bunch of different conditions to create the perfect audience depending on who you wanna target. So if we do include users when, and we can do events. So anytime a user completes a specific event, maybe they watch a video on our website, you can set that as an event and you can target people who have watched a video on your website. We can come over here to custom. They have link URL, outbound clicks demographics, so you can pick by several different demographics here, e-commerce, category, product ID, order coupon, transaction ID. So I'm not gonna go through each of these, but you can see there's a ton of different options that you have as far as who the user is, whether they watched a video, what type of device that they're using, what pages they visited. So if we do page and screen, and we already did, what we could do is page title here, and say page title contains, and we could do the same thing that we did before. You're gonna see it's gonna pull up some of our different pages here, but we could do the same thing we did before where you see 25 plus beach Christmas tree ideas. So if we do page title contains, and let's just say we do Christmas. Okay, so we have 1.2 thousand users in this audience, a page title that contains Christmas. Now what we can do is create two different audiences. So we have our one over here where the page URL contains all those different words. In Google Analytics 4, we could say page your page title contains Christmas, or let's say, again, we'll go to page screen, page title, and we'll do the same thing, contains, and we'll just do ornament. And it's gonna pull up some different pages here that do contain that word. So if we do ornament, we can click on apply. So we can keep doing this over and over again. So let's create the same basic audience. Okay, so if the page title contains Christmas or ornament or tree or wreath or garland or stocking. Now you can also do end here. So I could do page title contains Christmas and something else. So I could also add holiday. I could add a bunch of different titles here, but we have 2K users in this audience. Let's just set our membership duration to the maximum limit. We could target this audience every single Christmas. So we're just gonna say Christmas page titles. Okay, and one thing you can do when you're making Google Analytics 4 audiences, just so you know the source of your audience, is you could always do GA4, and then when it's imported here into Google Ads, you're gonna have a little GA4 at the end of it. So just one option to kind of keep things a little bit organized. We can add a description here, we can add exclusions. So there's a lot that you can do with all of these different audiences. So going through them, I mean, I can go through this for hours and hours, but hopefully this makes sense, some different audiences that you can create basically any action anyone takes on your website, you can target them with ads. So right now we have ages 35 plus, all users, purchasers, so I don't actually have a purchase on my website, so I don't have any users in this audience. And then I have Christmas page titles. So once this populates, it's gonna go into our Google Ads account and we can start targeting it. But for now, let's come back over to Google Ads. 
And what we can do is come here to our campaigns and we can create a new campaign. Okay, let's make sure we're in our Beachfront Decor account. I'm in a manager account that has two different accounts in it. So we're in Beachfront Decor. We're gonna create a new campaign. Now, what you wanna do is first choose your campaign objective. Now, if you're running remarketing campaigns, you really wanna be doing sales or leads depending on what goal category you have. So I have purchases here. So we're gonna remove our book appointments goal. I just have purchases as my conversion, but it's basically an affiliate click every time someone clicks out to an affiliate link. So we have purchases, we're gonna run a display campaign. We can enter our website here, beachfronttocore.com. And we can also enter our Christmas landing page. So if you wanna enter your landing page here, you can. Um, I'm just gonna enter my homepage for right now. Then you wanna name your campaign. So let's just say Beachfront Decor Christmas Sale. Okay, so campaign settings, you wanna choose your location targeting. So I'll just set mine to United States and Canada. Set your language targeting. You can go into more settings if you want. I'm not gonna change any of the more settings. So we have our location and language targeting. We'll click on next. Next is gonna be your budget and your bidding strategy. So since we're using the sales objective, then what we wanna do is we wanna set our daily budget. Let's just say I wanna spend $25 a day on this campaign. We wanna focus on conversions we wanna automatically maximize conversions. You can set a target cost per action. So obviously if every conversion is worth $10 for you, then you want your target cost per action to be less than $10. So this here says $3.60, a typical target CPA for a display campaign. Let's just set ours at $3. So we wanna drive conversions at $3 per conversion. We'll click on next. Okay, so first things first, optimized targeting is set up for you, so that's automatically set up. It's gonna use information like our landing page and all of our assets, and it's also gonna incorporate our targeting as well. So when we come in here to add targeting, what you wanna do is go into audience segments. This is where your remarketing audiences or your data segments will appear. So if we come over here to browse, we scroll down, and we come to how they have interacted with your business, your data, and similar segments. So we click, you can see website visitors, there's custom combination segments, so you can combine people who have watched YouTube videos, you can combine people who have visited your website. I can say anybody who's watched my beach Christmas videos and who's also been to my beach Christmas pages and just create this massive Christmas audience of anybody who's interested in Christmas at the beach whatsoever and I can target them with my ads. So if we come here to website visitors, so you could see age is 35 plus, so they actually have these already created and imported, so that's much quicker than it's happened for me in the past. But what we can do here, so we have two different options. I can say Christmas page titles, and I can say Christmas pages. So this was the page titles we just created in Google Analytics 4, so the size is still zero. So it may take a few day days to actually show up in our audience manager. Let's see if it's in there already. Usually when I create an audience in Google Analytics 4, it's not there instantly, but maybe they change that. And then we have the one we just created, so our Christmas pages page URL. Let's come over here to our audience manager real quick. And okay, so we have these here instantly actually. So age is 35 plus, and we have our Christmas page titles GA4. So these were the two audiences that we just created in Google Analytics 4. So generally in the past when I've done this, I don't, these don't appear here immediately. So they must have, uh, they must have these come in quicker, but they aren't populated yet. If you look, they're both size zero. So it will take a little bit of time to start getting people in these audiences. But if we're targeting both of these, then once these audience start to populate and they become eligible, then we can actually start serving them our advertisements. So we can select these two website visitor audiences. Those are our two targeted segments and we have optimized targeting set to on. Now you can turn optimized targeting off. It It's gonna target people who are not actually part of your, your data segments. If you're using optimized targeting, it's gonna go out and find other people based on all the information that Google has, has about your campaign to try to target other people who they believe are gonna be as likely to convert as people in your data segments. So it's up to you if you wanna use optimized targeting. I generally use it. It's gonna expand your audience who you're targeting and it's generally to improve your performance. But if we just wanna target people who are visiting our Christmas pages on our website, then we'll turn it off and we'll click on next. So next what you wanna do is create your responsive display ads. Now I just created a video where I went over responsive display ads, how to create them, best practices. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually recommend that video to you. I put the link in the video description so that you can easily find it. But this is how you create a remarketing Google display ads campaign from start to finish. So coming back over here, how to set up remarketing. So one, you need a Google ads account and a Google analytics Four account. Now, if you see GA four, that means Google analytics Four. you need to enable Google signals data collection in your Google analytics Four account, then link your two accounts create your data segments in Google Ads or Google Analytics 4, and then you wanna target your data segments with your Google Display campaigns. Now keep in mind, if you do turn Display Expansion on, then that means that it's gonna expand beyond people in your remarketing audiences, but ultimately what Google Ads is trying to tell you is we're gonna to try to reach people who we think will convert at the same rate as the people in those audiences. So you could turn off optimized targeting, especially if you have large audiences and you don't wanna expand them anymore. Now for me, with smaller audiences where it said only about 2000 people then what you might want to do is expand it to make sure that you're actually spending and reaching people with people who are going to be more likely to convert on our website okay so you've launched your campaign it's running for a little bit you're getting some activity now you need to optimize it so i'm going to go over six different google display ads optimizations some of the things that i look at whether i'm taking over a client account or I'm running my own campaign. So next is gonna be optimization and that's gonna finalize the course. Today I'm gonna to be going over six different Google Display Ads optimizations that you can make within your campaigns. So I'm gonna be using this old campaign that I ran and I ran this just as an example, but it was a furniture sale that I ran in April. So let's just say I wanna get this campaign back live and we're running another furniture sale for the next month. So I wanna make the optimizations to this campaign before I relaunch it. So I'm gonna go over some of the things that I would look at for one of my own campaigns or a client campaign when it's time to optimize your Google Display Ads. So let's get started with my list of optimizations here and then we're gonna go into each individual thing and kind of give you a little bit of insight into what you're optimizing. So optimize your landing pages, your display ads, your targeting, your bids and conversions. You should be using smart bidding for your Google Display Ads, the location that your ads are actually showing up, and your offer. So let's get into number one. Number one, optimize your landing pages. Where is your traffic going? What are people seeing after they click your ad? So you wanna make sure you're asking yourself some of these different questions at the bottom here. Where is my traffic going? What are people seeing? So in this case, I am running a furniture sale. So my ads are all geared around farmhouse furniture. Obviously people are seeing these as display ads, but one of the things that I like to do is go to Google search and search the main keyword that you're kind of promoting with whatever it is you're trying to sell with your Google display ads. Essentially what we're looking for here are just some landing pages. So I've gone through to some of the ads. We have an overstock ad right here. Overstock actually had an organic option here as well. So I clicked on both of them and then I scrolled all the way to the bottom of the page and I found this one more ad here for James and James Furniture. So we have these three different landing pages I pulled up along with my own. So I'm currently sending traffic to this landing page where you can see people can click through some different categories. If they scroll down, there's some different products for sale here. Over on the left-hand side, the one thing I really need to refine here is farmhouse products is make sure that this actually matches the category. So this doesn't really perfectly match the category because I have some lighting here. This is a Ray Dunn product that I actually have to regenerate the image. But what you can see here is this is my landing page. So I could definitely make improvements to it. There's really no offer on the landing page either. So I need to make sure I put my offer on the landing page. But let's look at Overstock's landing page. So for their advertisement, so at the very top of the page, you can see they had the first advertisement here below the shopping ads. So if we click, this is what their landing page is. So I come in, extra 15% off select furniture, featured categories, need inspiration, virtual showroom, uh, beautiful desks, and then they have a bunch of categories here. If we keep coming down, how to style the curved furniture trend, furniture by price, fluted furniture trend. So they have some different trends here. They have some pricing, they have some categories. So it's a good landing page to try to get people in who are looking for a broad category of farmhouse furniture and then they can click through and choose what they actually want to buy. Now the one thing is it just shows furniture here so there's nothing geared around farmhouse furniture. So that's the only real downside I see with this landing page. It's not really geared towards farmhouse. It's just furniture in general. Now the organic listing is actual farmhouse furniture. Basically they just have their farmhouse filter here. So any product that they have as a farmhouse style is on this page. So this isn't the greatest landing page, truthfully, because you don't have categories of products. You're just kind of showing 
different random products here and to me they're not all completely farmhouse related so not the greatest page but organically it ranks really well but that's because it's overstock so let's look at james and james i actually really like this landing page now you come here and essentially at the very top is a storytelling video so they're showing buy our furniture you can see it's not some large manufacturer that's making thousands and millions of pieces they're showing this garage where somebody's make putting together actual furniture you can see all these different furniture pieces here like a showroom so if we come down we can click through to some of these different categories why our customers love j and j built furniture along with some testimonials watch from james garage so they have a lot of different things here and i like this landing page overall so number one make sure you're optimizing your landing pages and one of the things that you can do is let's say you have your responsive display ad here now i'm going to go into a couple different things here but if you're running one or two responsive display ads let's just say you are running two responsive display ads that's going to be another one of my optimizations in a second so let's say you have two different ads here what you can do is duplicate your ads in your ad group so we come here we take the existing advertisement we edit we copy it and then we paste it so we're going to paste it right into this ad group now okay and what you're going to see is we have our one original advertisement here and all you need to do is duplicate this ad and then we can a b test our landing page so we have the same advertisement running you come into this new advertisement and just upload your landing page so what i would probably do is create a brand new landing page on my website so if we come back over here here's my current landing page i'd probably create a different landing page maybe feature some of the categories more put some testimonials in there make sure i have an offer at the top of the page maybe some different featured farmhouse furniture products so all of these different things could really help my landing page so what you want to do is just do a couple different designs on your landing page and see if you're able to see a lift in your conversion rate so you can improve your cost per conversion so we come back over here to google ads all you need to do is come to the top of your responsive display ad and just change your final URL here. So we update our final URL, keep everything exactly the same, click on save, and now we're testing our landing pages. So that helps us optimize our landing pages. So this might be something you wanna do monthly. So every month, create a new landing page, duplicate your ads, remove whichever landing page isn't performing as well, and then start testing the new landing page. Because what you're looking for is lift. So if you test this for a couple of different months, you can figure out, okay, this is my top performing landing page. This is the landing page that is the winner between all of them. So this is the one we're gonna run moving forward. So it really helps with your conversion rate optimization to actually optimize your landing pages. And a lot of people don't think about it when you're looking at your display ads campaign to understand where is the traffic going? What are people seeing after they click your ad? The conversion happens on your landing page. So you need good landing pages. So. I'm going to spend the most time on this one so let's bring us to number two optimize your display ads so i broke my own rule here here do you have at least two responsive display ads and have you tested standard display ads so let's come back over and the first thing i want to go over are standard uploaded display ads so some of the different file types you can use gif jpeg png so you can use all three of these different formats here and then these are all of the different ad sizes you can create now it's a ton of different ad sizes and if you're not working with a graphic designer and you're creating your own display ads you can see this can be a daunting task so what i would do is i would create these two sizes so 160 by 600 300 by 600 i would create 728 by 90 the leaderboard i would create a 970 by 250 and then i would create all three of the different mobile ads here and the main size you really want to focus on is 300 by 250, which you could also essentially expand and create a 336 by 280. So when we're looking at advertisements to create 300 by 250, 336 by 280, 160 by 600, 300 by 600, 728 by 90, 970 by 250, and then the mobile sizes. So that's what I would recommend as far as display ads. You don't need to create every single size. But if you are creating, for example, a 300 by 600, it's generally not that hard to kind of resize your advertisement and create some of these different sizes as well. So the more display ads, it, it helps. And what you want to do is make sure you're running standard display ads. You might want to run two variations so that the better performing display ads are actually showing up more often. But more importantly, create at least two responsive display ads. My strategy that I've been using with display ads is we're going to come back here We'll click on save if we scroll down generally what i'll do is i'll create one responsive display ad 
and then I will take this responsive display ad and duplicate it and I will test the images and the videos against each other. So I will have one responsive display ad with 14 images, three videos, create a second responsive display ad, keep the ad copy exactly the same, the final URL exactly the same, and all I'm doing is updating the images and the videos. So we're just looking for different visual assets to see what's performing better when people are seeing our responsive display ads. We're gonna keep our ad copy exactly the same. Our final URL is exactly the same for these two advertisements. The only difference is the visual assets. So what you would do is you would take these two advertisements, so we have two running, we're gonna copy these and paste them just like we did before, so that's gonna duplicate these two ads. And then coming back over here, I then optimize my landing pages by taking my other landing page variation and for my two new advertisements. So for those two that the, I just duplicated these. So for the two new ones that are that I just pasted, I'm just updating the final URL for those two advertisements. So we're running a total of four advertisements per ad group in our Google Display Ads campaigns. So hopefully that makes sense. You're essentially running two versions of your responsive display ads that are testing the visual assets and then you're also going to duplicate those and you're gonna test the landing pages. So you have four ads per ad group. What Google Ads is going to do is they're going to serve your top performing advertisements. So if you're running one responsive display ad here, there's no testing at all going on. Your, your campaign is just all focused on that one responsive display ad. If you're running four responsive display ads with different visual assets, with different landing pages, you're able to essentially test which landing page is performing better and which visual assets are performing better. Now, what you might wanna do is go into your settings and change your ad rotation to rotate evenly for a week or two, depending on how much you're spending. If you have a very high budget campaign, your testing will happen very quickly, but you wanna make sure that all of your ads are getting data, because let's just say all four ads spend $100, and let's say one of them drives 39 conversions, one of them drives six conversions. So obviously you have a clear winner here. Google Ads is gonna stop serving the one with six conversions once you set your ads back to optimize. So one and two, optimize your landing pages, optimize your display ads, specifically your responsive display ads. And then what you can do is upload standard display ads as well. Now to me, it's not a necessary step to upload standard display ads, at least create responsive display ads. I think they're much easier to work with. They create a bunch of different ad variations for you. And what you're looking for is the top ad variation that's going to lift your campaign. So that's gonna bring us to number three. Number three is optimize your targeting. Now, if I'm running one display ads campaign, and let's say I have my ad groups here, what I will generally do is separate my ad groups so that one of them is all of my data. So using your data segments, specifically if you can create buyer segments, because then you have a bunch of people that have actually purchased from you before, and you can target these similar audiences that are based on your data segments that are built on buyers. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's say you have a total of 5,000 sales over the last two months. You can say, okay, I wanna take everybody who has purchased for me and I wanna create that as a data segment. What's going to happen is Google Ads is going to create similar segments based on your buyers and you can actually target people with your advertisements who are very, very close lookalikes to people who are purchasing from you already. The other thing to understand is are segments converting or not converting? Now you may want to separate out your data segment campaigns from campaigns that are running in market segments, custom segments, similar segments. So sometimes you can run two different Google display ads campaigns, understanding that you're going to see the best data from your, your data segments, which is remarketing. It's just another way to say remarketing. So people who are visiting your website, people who are on your customer list, people downloading a mobile app, people watching your YouTube videos. If you're using all of that data, you're gonna get the best possible targeting for your Google Display Ads. So if we come over here, I've done a ton of videos about Google Display Ads remarketing and all the different audience segments. So I will put that in the video description so you can easily watch any of those videos if you have any questions. Now what I would recommend doing is if we come in here to my one ad group and we come over here to audience, what you're gonna see, and this is why sometimes I will separate out my campaigns, run a campaign, a remarketing campaign, and then run a campaign focused on other audience segments outside of my remarketing audiences. So if we come over here to edit audience segments, you can see I'm targeting an in-market audience home furnishing, so people who are actively researching and purchasing home furniture, and then I have a custom segment, farmhouse furniture, so people who are actually searching different farmhouse furniture keywords. So you can create your own custom segments very easily. Down here at custom audience segments when you're building a campaign, 
create a custom segment here, choose people who search for any of these terms on Google and add a bunch of relevant search terms based on whatever it is you're uh, advertising. So we're gonna click on cancel here. We're gonna click on cancel again. So I have these two audience segments along with a similar segment along with website visitors segment. So if we do show table, what you're gonna see is most of my clicks are all coming in through the in-market segment and this custom segment. So you're seeing most of my clicks there, I'm getting some from my similar segment and some from my all user segment. So what you may wanna do is create two separate campaigns, one based around your data, one based around other segments that are not people who have interacted with your business before, with the understanding that your target CPA is going to be better for a remarketing campaign than it will be for another campaign. Now, the other thing that you can do is do it just like I did here, and then you go over to the settings for your ad group. So I'm within my ad group right now. You go to the settings for your ad group, and then what you wanna do is edit ad group targeting, and you wanna make sure you have optimized targeting turn on. So if we scroll down here, you wanna make sure you turn optimized targeting on because what that's gonna do is gonna help you find more people beyond your targeting signals, but what Google Ads does is it uses your targeting signals such as your data segments, such as similar segments, such as custom segments, your landing page and your assets to find people that are likely to convert that are outside of our actual targeting. So some different options you have as far as targeting. So a few different things you can do, create separate campaigns, you can also, if within your campaign, you can create different ad groups. So create one ad group that is your custom segment, click on save, and then all you need to do, just like we duplicated the advertisements, take this ad group, we have our four responsive display ads running in this ad group already, so that's when you wanna duplicate your ad group. Copy it, paste it, and then look at different segments, whether you want a different ad group with an in-market segment, another ad group with similar segment, another ad group with your data segments. What you can do over time is choose to pause specific ad groups if you're noticing that they're getting the most clicks, impressions, cost data. If you're seeing one ad group is performing better than another, if you're seeing one ad group isn't getting enough clicks, then pause some of the ad groups that are getting all of the clicks because what you're trying to do is you're trying to give Google Ads data because what's gonna happen next is we're gonna optimize our bids and conversions. So we can optimize our bidding by giving Google Ads data. So if we have four different ad groups here with four different sets of targeting and Google Ads knows, okay, the custom segment is outperforming every other ad group, we're gonna continue to focus on that targeting and that targeting group. And we're gonna keep running more of the campaign towards this ad group because that's what's driving conversions. So number four is optimize your bids and your conversions. So when I say optimize your conversions, make sure you're properly measuring your KPIs. You may have multiple key performance indicators. Maybe you have a conversion for add to cart. Maybe you have a conversion for purchases. Maybe you have a conversion for somebody who signs up and books an appointment or somebody who fills out a lead form. So make sure you're optimizing for the main conversions that you wanna see happen for this campaign. Don't optimize for 10 different conversions, but if you have an add to cart conversion, and let's say you give that a value of $1 every time someone adds something to a cart, that's a $1 value. And then you can also say, okay, let's use our purchases as well. And we're gonna actually import our value from every single purchase into Google Ads. So that's all really important and you're allowed to use different bid strategies, specifically smart bidding strategies that optimize for your conversions. Now with a display campaign, what I would recommend doing is go into your tools and settings and then under measurement, go into your conversions, make sure you're using data-driven attribution for your conversions. So if we come back over here, you can see my conversion action right here, an affiliate click. We click on the details for this conversion. You can edit your settings and use a data-driven attribution model, which is actually gonna take into account every single click from your campaign every single click from your Google Ads campaigns to understand how conversions happen for you. So is somebody clicking on a display ad once and then a search ad and then they're converting? That gives you more data about every single click that somebody takes on a path to conversion on your website and Google Ads will actually give that display click some level of value so that they know, okay, these clicks aren't leading directly to conversions, but they are the click before the next click that generally leads to a conversion. So data-driven gives you more data along the way. You're not just looking at the very last click, you're looking at all of the clicks on the path. Now, if we come back over here as well and we're looking at our campaign, we go into our settings 
what you really need to do when you're creating a display campaign, use a marketing objective of sales or leads. So you're using conversion tracking. You want to focus on sales or leads, depending on what it is that you're driving. Then you have your goal here. So your goals. So you want to make sure you're using this campaign specific goal setting. So you're optimizing for your main conversion here. Now, last but not least, your bidding. So I have a target CPA bid strategy for this campaign. If I just click on change bid strategy, you should always be focused on conversions or conversion value. So conversion value, obviously, if you actually are have a store, you're selling products, you're able to in, import your price and your revenue data into Google ads, you can optimize for conversion value, whereas leads, you're going to optimize for conversions. And then what you can do is focus to automatically maximize conversions, or if we go to conversion value, you can set a return on ad spend and say, okay, I want a return on ad spend of 300%, click on save. And then what you're trying to do is just improve what you're getting out of your campaign. So number four, optimize bids and conversions. So that's going to bring us to number five, optimize where your ads appear. Are specific placements not converting? Are you targeting content and audience segments together? So one of the things that you can do is once you start getting more and more data for your campaign is you can come over here to content. So we're going to continue. We're not going to save our changes. Come over here to content and you can actually target topics or you can target placements or you can target display and video keywords. Now, Google ads recommends choosing one of these three options as far as content targeting. And what they're going to do is they're going to take your audience segments into account. So if I'm targeting, let's say, for example, a custom segment for people who are searching for farmhouse furniture, I can incorporate topics and say, I want people to only see my ads when they're on a page about home and garden. So I like using topics or display and video keywords. So if you're entering display keywords here, they could very much match your search keywords, your SEO keywords. You could click on the plus sign here and import your keyword list because what you're looking for are keywords that match specific websites or YouTube channels or mobile apps so that people are actually seeing things about the topic that you're advertising. So it's similar to topics, except what you're using are contextual display keywords. So if, for example, I just enter a keyword here, sports, then my ads may show on ESPN. So you're trying to find similar websites to the display and video keywords you enter here, and topics would be the same as well. Now you can target individual placements, but keep in mind, if you start adding placements, it's gonna limit your campaign to the placements you set. So if you have a list of 300 different websites that you want your ads to show up on, then you can add placements here. If you're going to put two different placements, then you're probably not going to get enough data for your campaign. So I generally focus on topics or display video keywords while I am layering in my audience targeting, my demographic targeting. All of that can be very important as you're optimizing your campaign. Now, what you can also look at is see where your ads appeared. That's where just placements can be much better. See where your ads appeared. Now, in this case, this campaign ran a lot in mobile apps, but it was driving conversions. So, so don't really see a huge issue with it. Gmail, Solitaire, Mail.Google.com, Candy Crush, Solitaire, Domino's. So you're, you're seeing all these different mobile apps. So I'll show you how to exclude mobile apps in a minute. You really don't want your ads to only run on mobile apps, but you're going to see there's websites here too. Now, some of these websites, CostcoDeals.co, OnlyInYourState.com, OpeningHours.ca, some of these are just like those websites that have a ton of different content about random things that mean absolutely nothing, but they get a ton of traffic because opening hours is probably a website about what time certain things open. So somebody might be researching, you know, what time the local IHOP opens and they're just going to go to this website to figure it out. So you may want to come in here and look for segments that are driving clicks, driving impressions, driving your costs up and not driving conversions. Cause then what you can do is take some of these different placements, edit, and exclude them from your campaign. Now, what you can also do is if you go into placements here, or excuse me, we're going into exclusions here, and then we wanna set placement exclusions. If you do wanna exclude mobile apps from your campaign, what you do is you come to exclusions, placement exclusions, you click here, and you're gonna exclude placements. You're gonna ex add placement exclusion, exclude from campaign, and then you want to go into your app categories here and select every single app category. So you want to select all of these different categories, click on save. You can see I already selected some of them. Go into all these different app categories, click on save, and then your ads will no longer show on mobile apps. 
So some different options as far as optimizing where your ads appear. Are certain placements not converting? You wanna make sure you're excluding them. Exclude mobile apps if they're not converting for you. Are you targeting content and audience segments together? So I like to incorporate topics sometimes or display in video keywords along with the audience segments I'm targeting. And then you can also layer in some demographic targeting as well. So all of that is very important to make sure you're reaching the ideal customer. Now, last but not least, number six, and this is gonna be one that's really more up to you. I'm not gonna have a ton of different ideas here, but optimize your offer. What's your unique selling point? Is your offer converting with other types of traffic? So are you seeing good conversions overall with from your organic search traffic, from your social media traffic, Maybe you're running other types of paid ads from Facebook ads, or maybe you're running Google search ads. So is your offer converting in general? Now, when I look at mine and we come over here to farmhouse furniture, there's no offer on this page at all. When I originally ran the campaign, I had it as a 20% off sale. So if I'm actually running a sale where it's 10%, 20% off, whatever it may be, then what I need to do is make sure that the ads talk about the sale, make sure that's what's highlighted in the advertisements. Here's what you're saving. It's a limited time offer. Go get your furniture before the sale ends. They come in here. I want to do the same exact thing. I want a big banner up at the top here, maybe at the top of the page right here that says save X amount percent up until this date. So you're trying to create some type of limited time offer, some type of reason somebody actually wants to purchase from you. What is your unique selling proposition? What are you selling to people that's better than your competitors? So I did another example here. So just search marketing software. This is kind of my go-to search to look at some different ads and click on some landing pages. So marketing software, captera.com, top 10 marketing software, easy to use, free tools and reviews, easily find what you're looking for. Okay, so I open Captera marketing software, compare product features and ratings to find the marketing software for your organization. So a really good landing page because they have top 10 marketing software for me to choose and they have a bunch of reviews for all of them it looks like they have some different reviews that they brought in here as well and so it's it's a really good landing page because they're trying to get me to click visit website for one of these pieces of marketing software specifically they probably want me to use marketo engage since that's what they have at the top so these are some different landing page options and offers now i also click on this zoho.com best marketing software click on it the unified marketing platform for marketing teams, get started with your free trial. So not a bad landing page overall. To me, I would probably highlight more, increase the ROI of your marketing spend and optimize your team productivity. Because whether you're a boss or you're the person working for the boss, you want to increase your ROI and you want to optimize your productivity. So I would probably up here at the top, put increase your ROI, the unified marketing platform. So that means that's the quick selling point right at the top, increase your ROI. That's what you're trying to get across to people. So they have the unified marketing platform for marketing teams. So they went more with the optimize your team productivity, not a big deal. Now what they could do is run this landing page and then have another landing page and see which one performs better, like we talked about earlier, and hopefully you get people to sign up with their free trial. So coming back over here for your Google Display Ads campaigns, you wanna optimize your landing pages, you wanna optimize the offer on your landing pages, your display ads, what people are seeing and clicking before they visit your landing pages, and then what you really wanna focus on is who you're targeting, where they're seeing your ads, and how Google Ads is helping to optimize your campaign as well. So all of these go hand in hand. What you need to do is keep giving Google Ads different things to test and what they're going to do is they're going to optimize your bids they're going to try to optimize to drive you more conversions thank you for watching my google display ads course if you enjoyed the course please leave a comment please like it please share please subscribe to the channel anything you can do will help me grow my channel and help me create more courses like this one i do have courses on my channel about keyword research about google ads and about youtube advertising right now if you are interested in other courses so Thank you again for watching and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.